Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Friday Nightmares podcast, episode number 53, part two. <laughs> <laughs> and on this episode, we are going to continue our horrors from around the world, uh, this time diving into French horror films. I am one half your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy, fully vaxxed, wet wax, boosted, ready to climax, and if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I am the man in the red shirt, with also known as the Glorious Beard. And with You're me as always... <laughs> Your intro gets so much longer. So I'm going to just say bonjour, je m'appelle Heather. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming to you from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And here we are, episode 53, French Horror. First off, a big shout out to Ken Bates. Uh, he's one of our <laughs> fans, our listeners, fans. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty bold statement to make, Heather. He's a oh, listener. <laughs> one of our dozens of listeners. <laughs> dozens of listeners on our Friday Nightmare page who made a very funny meme of me <laughs> in a leather suit that I feel I need to go out and purchase. And <laughs> me whipping Scott to keep him on a schedule. And it's not far off from the truth. Nope. Um, <laughs> that is accurate. basically how it works all the time because I am very scheduled and regimented and I've had many people tell me that my regimented schedule is what keeps them on schedule for things it's um, true yeah but I can be also very non-scheduled but I do live my generally speaking 85 percent of my life is very scheduled yeah I was gonna say you are when it comes to me you are the taskmaster <laughs> yes I am my ass in line <laughs> Well, if I didn't, we would never fucking record. The reason why we have been so consistent over the past two years, because I've been like, all right, Scott, we got to record. All right, Scott, we got to record. Okay, Scott, we got to record. Okay. And the busier Scott's life gets, like when Scott, when it was like, you know, hashtag March 2020, April 2020, May 2020, June 2020, Scott didn't have a lot going on. No. <laughs> so, but now Scott is a busy Scotty and I have to like really find, and I'm busy too. We both, we both obviously have social lives <laughs> and we have to figure out a time to sit down and record and I do other podcasts and Scott does one other podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I really it's don't have me. much. Of a... Yep, I was just it's one of the podcasts that I do with you. So yeah, <laughs> I don't really? have much. No, you're not on an all guy podcast like I am on an all female podcast. But that's only once a month. I do a podcast called Supper Party Massacre with a bunch of ladies, and um, that's a once a month thing. I don't consider that a big commitment. Right. Um, Saturday mornings, once a month, I I pull my ass out of bed from partying the night before and. Uh, do my best to get through it so but and yeah speaking of partying i was just gonna say speaking of partying the night before mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so i uh ended up meeting up with our good friend uh adam thomas from uh the double edge double bill podcast and he had his co-host thomas mariani from florida come visit michigan for his birthday so i got to go over there last night and hang out with both of them and uh party it up like because you guys have heard the stories of whenever I party with Adam, the next day is usually a day of recovery because that man knows how to party. Mm -hmm. And yep, this was no different. We were all getting pretty messed up, having lots of booze, had a bunch of people over. And yeah, it was great getting to finally meet Thomas in person because Thomas is one of my inspirations for being a podcaster. Like I used Aww. to listen to him on horror news radio, like back in, I think, 2015 or so. Did and you tell him that? Were you like, yep. did you ever know that you're my <laughs> hero? Well, I did tell him like, yeah, like you are, you, you were one of the ones that inspired me to be a podcaster. And he looked at me and goes, really? I'm like, yeah. I was like, it's kind of weird though, since I'm 10 years older than you, but somehow I am, <laughs> somehow you are the mentor and I am hey. the mentee. We can look up to people that are younger than us. Age exactly. doesn't necessarily mean anything. No, it doesn't. It just felt, it just threw me off, and I'm going, "Wow, I did not realize I was ten years older than you." Because yeah, he just he just turned thirty. Well, you're an old man, so yeah, I, I guess am. you wouldn't know. <laughs> well, and it shows I'm the old man because I was the oldest one at the uh, group last night. 
<laughs> oh, you grandpa! What were you know, doing right? there, Rame? I know I was I was complaining because I wasn't in bed by nine o'clock yet, and <laughs> you were like, "Where's my fucking warm milk?" <laughs> yeah, I need my warm milk. I need I need to get my beauty raised. <laughs> oh man, be up at Scott, five in the morning. You become more beautiful. Like honestly, like you are the looks of this podcast. I don't know if you could get ah. any better looking. No, nah, more like I need at least forty-five hours straight sleep to <laughs> get some beauty. <laughs> I don't think so. Look at that beard. <laughs> The glorious beard that you finally trimmed. Oh yes. my God. Thank God, Scotty. It was, it does look a little less CC top and a little more. Um, I like IPAs. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, yep. This was cause I, cause I, you knew I was going to go for this once I was able to get into the barber. Cause I've been talking yep. to you about it. Yep. I was debating on going all the way, like just trimming it all the way down to like to my mm. face. But I was, but uh, you had said, you know, why don't you go about halfway first and just kind of see how you like it. And yeah, like, Yep, I went about the halfway mark right now, and I like it. And it may go shorter after a couple of weeks or so. We'll see. But like, yeah, I like how it is right now. It's definitely a lot easier to maintain. That's for sure. Oh, you're looking like a hundred bucks, Scotty. Oh, thank you. You know, there's fine, and then there's Scotty fine. There's, F-I- <laughs> there's fine, and then there's F I N E fine. <laughs> so true, so true. I um, oh, fuck. I was gonna say something about age. So yesterday I went to a place called Flying Squirrel, which is basically (laughs) Sky Zone for all you Americans. We have Sky Zone up here. It's a trampoline park. So there's trampolines everywhere. You you can bounce off the walls, literally, but, you know, bounce into pits with foam, bounce and throw basketballs. They have a dodgeball court and it was a Saturday and we have just lifted almost all the COVID restrictions here. Uh, proof of vaccination will end this Tuesday. They're talking about getting rid of masks by the second week of March. Um, so, you know, people are now, it's getting back to quote unquote pre pandemic busyness at places. Wow. And Flying Squirrel was fucking nuts. There was a billion birthday parties going on and a billion children. I sent Scotty a video yeah. <laughs> and then a picture of me, like basically, like it was Lord of the Flies. And my friend's daughter would really like it. So we would jump on one of the trampolines, like obviously there's trampolines everywhere. And I weigh more than she does at six years old. I know that's shocking everybody, but I do weigh more than a six-year-old. So I would jump up really, really high and she's a little daredevil, right? So then I would bring myself down sitting. So I would jump up and sit and push myself off the trampoline. So she would go flying, right? (laughs) So... I did it once and she, of course, thought it was the best shit ever, right? So then, of course, I had to do it another billion times after that. Um, So my knee's a little sore today. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) anyway, um, there was a mom that came with with, uh, Aurora was allowed to have a friend there because it was her brother's birthday. He's 12. She's six. And I was sitting with the mom just making chit chat. And, you know, I like children. So, of course, the assumption would be that I have kids. She's like, oh, do you have children? And I said, oh, no, I don't. She's like, well, lots of time. I'm like, well, not really. I'm 39. It's not going to happen. She's like, you're 39. I'm like, yes. (laughs) Yes, I am. So I thought that was nice. Who knows? She thought I was young enough to breed still. And I know you can have kids at 39. I understand that to everyone that's listening. Um, It's just when kids are a lot of fucking work. And Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure they steal your soul. Um, (laughs) And I really love other people's kids. A shout out to Darren. Um, He has a son. I won't say his name because I want to respect Darren's privacy, but his son is like the cutest thing in the entire planet. And Darren will send me like videos of his son playing hockey. And his son's like a little political activist, like his dad, like his, well, between, between Darren and his wife, they're both very informed, intelligent people. We're actually in a chat group with Darren, Scott, and I. And the other day we were talking how Darren's so much smarter than Scott and I. (laughs) We always (laughs) feel like we have nothing to say back to him because he's so much smarter than us. But um, I love getting, sorry, go ahead. I was saying, but thankfully he is the one that keeps us up to date on what's going on currently. Yeah, like if it wasn't honest, yeah, if it wasn't for Darren, we would know fuck all. Like honestly, Darren's our CNN only better and more (laughs) objective. So anyway, this long story is to say how much I love other people's kids and that they're not a lot of work um, because your own kids, I feel like they're the same thing as like little demons that you have in your house that control everything you do, especially toddlers, man. Like they're fucking scary and like they don't give no fucks. Like they don't, they don't care. No. And uh, it's a lot of work. Scotty and I are both childless and I don't think Scotty plans on having kids. I don't think he... At, at, at this age, I guess it would all depend on like, uh, like, because I wouldn't mind having a kid. 
but more than likely at this time in my, my life, adoption would probably be the option. Yeah, I would definitely not have a kid. And I don't even think I would date someone that had kids. I guess I just, A, that's complicated because if you break up, the kids get hurt. Yeah. Um, and B, yeah. The woman always takes on more. I that's still very much how it is. And oh, absolutely. Heather, uh, Heather don't play that. <laughs> so flying squirrel for two hours yesterday was enough, and me doing bouncy bouncy on the trampolines, and then being stiff last night walking around after seeing the curse. Thanks to Scotty. Um, great, great fucking movie. We'll get to that later. Um, but yeah, and then I drank a lot, like Scotty. So I was hungover this morning <laughs> yeah. too. Um, went out for some drinks and then had some more drinks <laughs> when I came home. <laughs> Oh. Of course you did. Living your best life. Hey, you know what? That's the that's the pros of not having kids. Right? <laughs> right? Like I could go have fun at Flying Squirrel yesterday afternoon, do the jumpy jumpy and all that kind of shit, and then come home and not have to fucking worry about anything. It's kind of hashtag living your best life. Exactly. Think about you last night out with the boys. You were out getting hammed. Hi. You didn't have to come home and be like, oh now I gotta like take care of my two-year-old. Sounds great. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> So no, it definitely ma- it definitely makes it easier to do stuff like that. It really does. Hashtag this is why Scott and I are childless, by the way. That's why because Scott and I like to drink and party. And Scott says he would have kids, but not really. And plus that kid's name was Gizmo. Gizmo. <laughs> Yay. And I wouldn't speaking... na- I would name my child Gizmo. Would you really? No. Please fucking don't. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, that'd be horrible. Like we're gonna be tortured. Um so I guess we should break into our 2022 watches. Look at me. I'm so proud of you. It. So, it's such a big deal, you know? End of February, and I'm on with the 2022 watches. Um, I don't even want to talk about this first one because Scott <laughs> didn't like it as much as I thought he would, and he compared it to a Lifetime film, and I was mad about that for, like, a day. I'm still mad about it now that, it, now that I'm saying it. It's bringing up old wounds. <laughs> um <laughs> So this movie that we're going to talk about, I'll talk about it first, Scott, because you don't like it. No one cares I, I didn't about your say opinion. That. Oh my god! No one cares about your opinion <laughs> on it. We've all decided that it doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, this movie is called Here Before. It is an it has an eighty three minute runtime. It's a twenty twenty one movie. It was an Irish film. It was released in Ireland. It's come over here later. Um, it's a very, very subtle horror film. Just so everyone knows, it has a three point one rating on Letterbox, despite what Scott wants to say. Um, so anyway um (laughs) um it's basically about a mother who is grieving the loss of her daughter and another child moves in who is very familiar to her daughter and some strange shit starts to happen and obsession becomes relevant it's a very subtle film it's an 83 minute runtime i was glued to the screen the entire time the acting is very good um, not an over-the-top horror film. It really isn't. Um, no. It's it's a very subtle, and some people wouldn't even call it horror. And you know what? That's fine. You don't think it's horror? I'm not here to argue with you. Um, I just really enjoyed the acting quality of it in the story. It spoke the Heather language. It was it was very good explanation of grief and trauma. Now Scott's going to talk about why it sucked. Scott, I, oh my God, I did not hate this movie. <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> No, um, but no, I I agree with you. Like everything about like the acting is really well done. Um, like and I was I will admit I was like curious and glued to the screen because I was curious to see what was going to happen next because it was a very interesting story. The story itself just didn't uh, speak the Scott language to me, where it like sucked me in as much as it sucked you in. Like yeah, I was glued yeah. to the screen, was curious about it, and the reason I called it Lifetime was not because of the acting or anything like that. It just felt like the storyline was a lifetime style story, which isn't the bad thing. Like it's just that's how it felt to me. Um, because lifetime movies, the bad part about them is the ridiculous, cheesy acting. <laughs> that's what really bothers me about lifetime movies. But no, like this I I just found the story to be okay. Like it wasn't like amazing to me. But at the same time, I did still give this a seven or a seven and a half out of ten. Like it's still up there for me. It's still way above average. So I just hurt. I just wounded Heather because it was, it was something I think one of her favorites before watching some other movies, and like she was hoping I would have it just as high, but I did not. But I also didn't dislike it. Well, and so you have two views here on it. It is very much a slow burn, and it is very much about grief, and it is considered a psychological thriller. It is available on iTunes or Apple iTunes if you 
<laughs> so choose Google Play, uh, Cineplex, and YouTube. So I think it's worth a rental, three ninety nine. If you like the kind of things I've presented, um, if that is not your thing, then yeah, it may not be the best fit for you. Yep, and I would agree about a three ninety nine rental. Yeah. Okay, Coolio. And have you seen the next one? Nope. I don't even know where this is at yet. Netflix. Is Netflix? Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll say it then. Um, the other one that I watched is a German film called The Privilege. It has recently been dropped on Netflix. It has a 107-minute runtime. The synopsis is a wealthy teen and his friends attend an elite private school, uncovering a dark conspiracy while looking into a series of strange supernatural events. This has a really low rating. I don't think it's that bad. I don't know why it has such a low rating. I actually thought it was a really cool cult film. A lot of cult films come out. And to be honest, some of them are just repeating the same shit over and over again. And I thought this one was fairly interesting. Um, I was invested in the characters. I cared what was going to happen to these main kids. And it's long. Like it does feel the 107 minute runtime, but Yet again, for a free watch on Netflix, I rather enjoyed it. I haven't seen tons of German films, but I thought this one was pretty good. And I would say if you enjoy cult films and, and you like that whole kind of, I guess cult, yeah, cult films. If you enjoy cult films or films based about cults, I think you'll enjoy this movie. It's a free watch on Netflix. You can't go wrong. Well, I mean, that's that's perfect, too, since it's a German film, because that could be one of our categories coming up for one of our episodes here. Oh, look at it's that, an huh? It's an option. <laughs> It's an option. But yeah, this is, uh, I'll definitely have to check this one out then. Because yeah, I don't. I haven't seen too many German films either myself. So it would be nice to kind of dive into some. Yeah, I enjoyed it, Scott. I think for a watch on, on um, Netflix, and you can dub it if for some reason you want to watch it at work. I know a lot of people don't like dubbing. Right. Personally, I think it's fine sometimes if you're busy doing something else and you just need to know what's going on. But um, no, I enjoyed it. It was really good. Yeah, because yeah, when it comes to dubbing, I don't, I don't ever have that take away from the movie itself. Like, because I know I'm like, okay, if I decide to watch this in dubbing, I can't uh, judge the acting because the dubbing's not going to always be that no, great. No, of course yeah. not, right? It's, it's going to be, yeah, that's a good way to look at it. You have to understand that there's going to be differences. Yeah, um, but yeah, I guess you want me to do the next one since we both watched it. Uh, please, so I don't do all of them and take your thunder. <laughs> all right, so the next one is called Shut In, and. Uh, this one was recommended by you. You uh, you were really high on it, so I wanted to check it out, and I'm glad I did. This movie is very, uh, very emotional and real. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the synopsis is basically about a young single mother who is held captive along with her two children by a violent ex and must plot their escape before it's too late. That synopsis is terrible that I just read, because that is not at all what happens. Um, pretty much what ends up happening is... Uh, the mother is getting ready to move away from this house, like and her two, uh, her daughter and baby, baby boy. Uh, they're going to move somewhere further away mm -hmm. and uh, trying to get away from the abuse of X. Uh, and he just so happens to show up while she is like getting ready to leave. And he ends up forcing her into a pantry closet and locks the door and basically uh nails it shut on her so she is trapped in there alone and he leaves and leaves the and the basically you're just hearing the kids out there by themselves without their mother because their mother's trapped yeah and it's pretty much just like yeah she's stuck in there this whole time and trying to figure a way out more happens because there's another character that shows up that is absolutely disgusting and awful mm -hmm. but this was a very well done movie and like i said it actually kind of got under my skin just because of the abuse that happens in this. I know people that have gone through something very similar to this. Yeah. So it made me feel very uncomfortable the way it was portrayed. But man, this movie is uh, really fucking good. The acting that this woman does. So if you enjoyed, we need to, okay. If you did not enjoy, we need to do something. You're probably not going to like this film. Yeah. So don't waste your time. Um, if you enjoyed, we need to do something. You will like this film because for, I would say a good 30 minutes of the film, a little bit more, this character is locked in a closet and she's communicating with her children from inside the closet. And all you can hear is the children's voice as well as an antagonist that enters the picture. And she's desperately trying to protect her children from someone who will do them great harm with only having her voice to kind of direct what's going on. Um, this movie is a great exploration of addiction. It's an excellent exploration of domestic abuse and it kept me going, like, just when you think it's over, there's another threat. 
Yeah. And, you know, I, I do think more happens in it than we need to do something. But if that movie did not capture your interest, this probably will not either. So don't waste your time. Um, but if you enjoy isolation horror and you want to see something similar to we need to do something in the terms of a character interacting with sound and other people's voices while being, you know, isolated, I think this is a movie for you. Yeah, I found this movie to be really good. Like, this is obviously, I think I'm at, I'm at like 22 watches now uh, for this year. And oh, same with me. Yeah, so I think I am, I think this is going to be in my number three right now. Yeah, this is in my top 10 for sure. Like, now top 10, it's early, right? But like, right. I, I would be, I will be surprised if this isn't floating somewhere in my top 10 by the end of this year or at least getting an award. Yes, absolutely. At the minimum, um, because I think it's just a really, really well done film. Yeah, it's very, very well done. Now, unfortunately, I'm... it hasn't been released yet anywhere, but I'm going to assume that you'll be able to find it on Google, iTunes, YouTube. I don't know if this is something Shutter will pick up, possibly, but it may be something that Shutter picks up next year. I don't yeah. know if they'll get to it this year, similar to some other stuff you and I have seen screeners for, and then Shutter gets it the following year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes out, everybody, for Google, um, iTunes, and YouTube. It's called Shut In, and it's a 90-minute runtime. Yep, and this is worth, if if it's a rental, this is worth any price you have to pay. Yeah, absolutely. If you like what Scott and I said, yeah. like if what we said, you're like, yes, I like that, then rent this movie. If you're like, I didn't like that, then I don't rent this movie because you're probably not going to enjoy it. So Yep, that's exactly right. it. Like, or maybe I'm wrong. I, I'm actually who I'm thinking of. And that's right. I'm going to say it because they called me a bitch on their podcast. Is oh. Tim Davis. <laughs> Tim Davis, who didn't like. Are, are you listening, Tim? <laughs> who didn't like we need to do something. I almost want Tim to watch Shut In and tell me whether he likes it oh, or not. I bet you he will like this one. just cause... Because of the kids aspect of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's a good dad. Yeah, and he will have this. This one will have a. This one will make him feel. I I guarantee it. Now they called me a bitch. Now, okay, just to be clear here, <laughs> it was in comedy that they called me that. Well, they were, they and it were... wasn't. Let's be clear. It was Luffy and not Tim Davis. Yes, yes it was true. <laughs> but it was. But Tim said I was rude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I just choked on his IT. Um, so horror for dummies is who we're referring to. It's Tim Davis and Daniel Luffy, and notoriously. I think we're a little similar with Luffy at times of what we like movie wise, but Tim tends to be opposite though. Once in a while, we do have similar taste. Um, anyway, we're, we're avid listeners of each other's shows and we have a chat group. We're friends just so we're clear. Yeah. We're yeah, friends. We, we always give each other shit. <laughs> we always give each other shit. And they were talking about another podcast they were shouting out and there was Canadian on that podcast. And, uh, they were saying how nice it was to meet a nice Canadian and they were going <laughs> on and on and not like, I said something like, not like Heather, she's rude. And Daniel goes, yeah, that bitch. And it was really funny. Like it was, it was really, really, really well played. Yeah. Um, Cause as soon as I, as soon as I heard that segment and I heard him call you a bitch, I'm like, oh my God, I got a message Heather and tell her to listen was, right now. <laughs> and I think like, you know, and that's why I want to clarify here that this is, these are good friend of ours and yeah. that it was. <laughs> it's all in jokes. What's it be malicious? It was really well delivered. And then I, I sent them a private message telling them at summer, or what did I say? At WrestleMania, we were going to have a no holds bars match or something like that. Because <laughs> they also do wrestling for dummies, which is another yes. excellent podcast. Um but anyway, so Tim Davis, if you watch Shut In, I want to hear what you think. Because my, I don't know if you're going to like this because I know you didn't enjoy We Need to Do Something. Um, but maybe you will. And that's who I think of sometimes. When I, when I sometimes advise against a movie, I think, would Tim like this movie? <laughs> because he has <laughs> such different tastes than you and I. Right. Because um, like even listening to his top 10, I was like, what? But that's okay. That's okay, right? Like we are allowed you to- You love what you love. Absolutely. Um, and I'm just going to try to work at being less of a rude person. So um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Scotty, I, I this one, I was really interested in this next one. And I, you watched it. I didn't realize you saw it. So I'm really looking yeah. forward to hearing what you have to say. Yeah. So this one is, once again, another Tubi original. They are just knocking them out this year. I think this Man. is like the fourth Tubi horror film. Wow. Um, but yeah, this one is called uh, First Person Shooter. And it is basically about a video game developer that has been working on the, the next game that he's going to uh, produce and develop. 
and uh, he ends up getting hacked. And this hacker, uh, you, you don't like it plays out like you don't know how who it is or what the personal connection is to him at the moment. But this guy will goes to great lengths to pretty much destroy this main character's life by just like uh, sending out messages like to people and like trying to cause shit, like uh, sending out videos of him cheating on his wife and things like just pretty much anything he can. This guy is doing hacking wise is like happening to him and wow. he's like just his whole life is getting turned upside down and ruined by this guy and it's a uh, very just once again you know like i mean I've, like acting isn't the best but at the same time like it's a very real look at like the dangers of being hacked like having your private life just kind of put out there on display for public viewing and stuff like that and what what lengths someone will go to to ruin someone else's life for some little uh like what i'm gonna do to daniel and tim yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> the great lengths that Heather will go to to ruin their lives. <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, this one would probably be fitting more in the thriller genre than I'd say horror. Like I'd say it's borderline those, like borderline horror. But like I found this to be just a very interesting movie. Um, just because, like I said, I am, I've always been curious about like shit like this where hackers can pretty much ruin someone's life and yeah, like and they create a good story where i was once again glued to the screen just kind of curious okay what the fuck's this poor guy going to do next like what's or what's going to happen to him like what is going on here and like and i like the idea that this is uh based around a video game developer because you know you don't get that very much in uh horror movies like just probably like once every like couple of years you get like something based in a video game very true and, very true and i like the kind of the uh inside look of like you know game developers and like it even has like a lot of the game developer language like going gold and things like that that's cool yeah that's so cool. do you recommend it yeah i'd recommend it. i'd say it's okay like, I mean, you know, it's it's a free watch on Tubi because obviously Tubi is free. So like, I yeah, you're not losing out on anything. I thought it was pretty decent. Like I, if I gave it a rating, I was going to, I think I'd go with a six and a half, seven out of 10. Like it is enjoyable. It's not like, oh my God, everybody must go see this. But for being free on Tubi and if you want to watch something, it's an easy watch. Awesome. I love free and easy. You yeah. are speaking my love language. Yeah. Um, I'll check it out because we also, I think we're going to have to have a Tubi award this year because there's a lot of yeah. Tubi movies. So. That's a good point. I'll definitely watch it. And I like Tubi. I think Tubi's fucking brilliant. Um, oh, Tubi is amazing. Yeah. And, I, like, and their library awesome. collect, their library is incredible. And so what? You got to watch some commercials here and there. Yeah. And the older the movie, the less commercials. Like the less popular a film, the less commercials they put in it. Because I've they know that. that, right? And not a lot of people are going to watch it. So they're right. like, yeah, we know. Right? Which I, I totally think that's smart. Um, so Tubi, check it out, everyone. Um, the next one. Hmm. Both Scott and I have seen this. And um, I have some strong opinions about people that dislike this film. So it is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It has been dropped on Netflix. I think it was last week that it got mm-hmm. dropped on Netflix. Last, last Netflix. Friday. Last Friday. And uh, it's an 81-minute runtime. And, oh, my God, Tim Davis gave it four and a half stars. Oh, Tim. Oh, yeah. Tim, D- Tim Davis loved it. Oh, Tim looks like we're friends again. Um <laughs> Yeah, I I really liked this film. I really had a good time with it. I now I'm gonna I'm gonna give my little spiel and then Scott will give his because he's more of a Chainsaw Massacre franchise fan than I am. Neither one of us are huge, but right. I would say Scott likes the series slightly more than I do. I I enjoy the first one for what it is, but I don't think it's the most brilliant film that's ever come around. I really don't. I don't. I think it's fine. I think it's a great 70s film. I think it gives that nice kind of dirty, grungy feel to it. And I respect what it has done for cinematic history. But I do, I'm not someone who's like, oh man, best movie in the entire planet. I probably prefer the 2003 remake more. I just enjoy it more as a person. That doesn't mean that I think the movie's better, everybody. So it doesn't mean that I think the 1974 version is bad. As a personal preference, I enjoy Michael Bay's version of it. I I think it's more entertaining. I think it's more connective for me. I don't love Chainsaw Texas Chainsaw Massacre too. I have appreciate Stretch and the character development there. And what was the other one? Cop Trop Chop Trop or Chop Chop Top Chop Top um, Crop Top <laughs> Crop Top. top. <laughs> no, that's a parody. And I've seen the Renee Selmiger and I've seen the other ones like the beginnings or 3D and all that other shit. So I'm, I'm lukewarm on the series. I find it okay. So maybe that's why when I went into this one, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. I just figured Leatherface is going to fucking cut people up. I don't expect any kind of continuity 
because none of the films have continuity. None of them follow each other properly. None of them make any sense when they connect with each other at all. So my expectations were low. I thought the fucking, there's a bloodbath scene that is mwah, one of the fucking best bloodbath scenes I've seen in a long time. And I enjoyed the main characters. I, I'm so tired of people shitting on Gen Z. Like, I'm so oh, fucking yeah. tired of it. Grow up. They are allowed to have what they like, just like you were. Shut the fuck up. They're not uninteresting and vapid, vapid characters. You are. <laughs> That's what you think. Because Gen Z is just fine. And I think these kids portrayed people that really thought they were going to make a difference and come into this older town and build it up. That's not what you're watching this fucking film for. You're watching this film for kills and entertainment value and to see Leatherface. That's what you're watching a Texas Chainsaw Massacre for, film for. And another thing, it was released for free on Netflix. Like, this wasn't even a theatrical release that you had spent a lot of money on. So that's my right. two cents. Scotty, I'll let you go ahead. All right. So, yeah, I'm pretty much in the same ballpark as you because I really did enjoy this. Like, um, I, uh, it is a very just quick, violent slasher film. Um, I am like, I'll give you my history with the TCM franchise. I do like all of the movies. Like there has, there isn't one that I dislike, like even the bad ones I find entertainment out of, like kind of like Halloween franchise for me, where it's like, even all, even the bad ones there, I'll find some entertainment. It's just not one of my favorite franchises just because it's too convoluted and confusing and just like all over the place with the storyline, just like Halloween. Um, and just like Halloween. TCM said, hey, can we copy your homework from Halloween 2018, except for just change it just slightly? Because, uh, yeah, they even bring Sally back from the original and turn her into basically the Laurie Strode of the Halloween 2018 for this and just don't use her properly. Like, she was completely wasted in this movie. Like, I, there was really no point for her to even be there. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, however, I will say, like, yeah, if you're going into this thinking, oh, this is supposed to be a direct sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you are going to be greatly disappointed because that's obviously what they're trying for. But just go into this going, yeah, this is just another entry in the franchise because yep. it's fun. It's violent. I had no issues with the characters. Um, one thing I will say is this could have just been a standalone slasher if you took the name Leatherface out of it and mm -hmm. took Sa Sally out of it. This could have just been mm -hmm. a slasher that happens in Texas. Agreed. Like it, there really wasn't much that tied it to the original, except for like a few nods here and there, and obviously the villain. But <clears throat> yeah, all in all, I still had fun with it. I don't see why people are hating on it. I also don't see why like people love it as much as they do. Yeah. But like, you know, but like I'm I'm more in between. I think I'm like a seven, seven point five with this. Like I had fun with it. It's I did not feel like my time was wasted. I, I get that if you really love the original, and yet again, I respect the original and what it did. I expect I respect how it was filmed, what it was made, but it's not my go-to 1970s film. It wasn't even my top 70s films list, if we recall. Like, I didn't right. have it on there personally. That doesn't, again, mean that it's not a good film. So I understand that if maybe you really love this series and or this franchise, and this film just didn't work for you. Absolutely get it no problem but it's not a shitty horror film no it really isn't you know there's some suspenseful scenes in it it's your typical slasher as i said there's that one bloodbath scene that is which is incredible fucking incredible like i don't know man it was and yeah like there were you know sally coming back was i guess dumb i don't know i didn't really fucking care i thought that was fine like none of that really kind of connected that hard to make me dislike it but then again i don't have a huge love of the franchise so i think that that maybe affected it somewhat but i had a good time with it as a free watch on netflix i think it's definitely worth your time if you're looking for something fun and slashy yep and i will have to say when you brought up that uh bloodbath scene this movie definitely utilizes the chainsaw massacre part of its title it sure does unlike sure the rest does. Of the, unlike the rest of the movies in the franchise that you know, the chainsaw is somewhat used. This one, oh no, it gets good use. It gets it, really good use. It does. And like, I don't know. I think the, I don't know. I I really enjoyed it. It's not my favorite of the series, but then again, I'm not a huge fan of the series to begin with. Like, right. you know, the ones that I probably like the most are 2003, 
the 3D one because I do enjoy the get him cuz comment and that fucking storyline. Oh, that like, hurts my head. <laughs> I like it. You know, I like that. And maybe that's, you know, yet again, that's just me. It doesn't mean that they're great films. It just means that it's entertaining for me. Right. right? And that's okay. Um, but yeah, I do recommend people watching it on Netflix and just go yeah. into it knowing that it's, you know, for fuck's sakes, this is like what the eighth installment in this series. Yeah, yeah, just go into it like like it's a brand new slasher. Just don't try to tie it to the original. You'll have fun yeah. with it that way. Yeah, like besides Sally being there, if you just want to pretend like Sally just showed up and was like, oh, fuck, here I am. <laughs> like, right. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I think people are looking too deep into it. So check it out on Netflix. So the next one, have you seen this one, Scotty? I have not. Okay, so this one is a Shutter original and it's They Live in the Gray. And it's a 124 minute runtime. So it is a longer one. So I'll give you the little synopsis for it. So while investigating a child abuse case, Claire discovers that the family is being tormented by a supernatural entity. And in order to save the family, she must confront her own fears and use her emerging clairvoyance powers to stop the malevolent force. So I really enjoyed this film a lot. I think it was one of the better paranormal investigator films that have come out in a long time. I think her role, the main character's role as a social worker and how her ability to communicate with spirits comes through with that was really clever. I'm glad Shudder picked this up. I, I think it's really, really well acted. And I think unfortunately, because two people are too busy hating on fucking Chainsaw Mass, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and complaining or loving Scream, like it's going out of style and other movies that this is going to get pushed by the wayside. And I think that's yeah. a real shame. Because I think this is a really, really good movie that came out on Shudder. If you enjoy ghost stories, you enjoy the whole um, mystery behind this because you are trying to figure out if the ghost is evil or trying to help uh, throughout the film. And I think that it's done really, really well. And it's a free watch on Shudder and it's on all the Shudders. So if you have Amazon Shudder, it's there. It's also in, both in Amazon uh, for the United States and in Canada. It's on AMC Plus and it's on Night Flight Plus, which I guess is a new channel in the United States. So oh. I recommend if, if you have those streaming services, this movie is worth your time. And it's kind of nice that two of the main people are uh, Asian, of Asian descent, um, that take a, a forefront in this film. I think it's nice to see people that aren't white <laughs> taking leads in films. and. Right. Yeah, like I, I think it was a really, really well done film. So I really do recommend it. Scotty, you would like it. Is this one, uh, well, does this one have subtitles or is this English speaking? English. Yeah, it's oh, perfect. English. So I'll watch it work then. Yeah, it's English. So it's a good little ghost story, but it's long. It is 124 minutes. So that's why I was thinking like it'd be perfect for, perfect for work then. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good one to have playing for work. I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Yeah, because I, I did see you were talking about this one and I was curious about it. Like, cause there are a few of the uh, Shutter originals I have not hit up yet. Like I still need to see last thing Mary saw. I need to see this. But I think there's a new one that just came out called Hellbender. Yeah. I have to see the moon one still because oh, yeah, that's yep. all the moon one. or whatever. Yep. Right. Um, but this one I, I really did enjoy. I think out of the English speaking ones that have come out on Shutter, this has been the best one so far. Nice. All right. So I guess, yeah, we both watched this one and I think yeah. we both have differing opin opinions on this we one. We sure do. <laughs> uh, this one is called The Long Night. It stars uh, Scout Taylor Compton. And uh, it's basically about this couple that goes back to uh, Scout Taylor Compton's uh, character's uh, like town, I guess. And it's like gets a pretty much like an almost like an airbnb type situation where she's going and staying at this house and while they're there um they start noticing like weird like symbols and like uh totems out in the woods and all of a sudden like people start showing up wearing like the uh stag skulls and mm -hmm. stuff like that and like black cloaks so you can definitely tell it's like a cult of some sort and that are trapping them in this house and uh I won't get into much more detail than that, but like, yeah, she's basically going out there to try to figure out uh, who her parents were because she was adopted. And uh, yeah, like the story unfolds and it goes in a pretty interesting direction. Like I am a cult fan, so like I do like these types of cult movies. Um, this one I found like, yeah, there is some poor uh, acting. Like I, will, I have to say Scout Taylor Compton, I like her, just her acting's not the greatest. Um, but at the same time, like I did enjoy this film. It's creepy. It's got some, uh, what the fuck moments go going on throughout it. Uh, it's pretty violent at times. And yeah, like I, and I enjoyed the story all around. I thought this was pretty entertaining altogether. 
Yeah, I'm on the opposite end of Scott. <laughs> I did not enjoy this film. I thought it was boring. I thought the cult aspect was stupid. I didn't I didn't enjoy it at all. But that's me. Um, the acting wasn't even the thing that took me out of it. Like, I already had low expectations with who I saw in the film. Um, I don't think it was horrible. Like, I would be like, oh, it's a piece of shit. But no. there's very few films I say that about. Like, it has to be pretty bad for me to be like, I, I just think if you really like Scout Taylor Compton, then I think you'll enjoy this. I think if you enjoy cult films, like the whole cult stuff a lot, I think you'll enjoy this. Um, it is available on, let's see here, Prime for rent, iTunes for rent, Google Play, Voodoo and Microsoft Store. Uh, I don't, I probably wouldn't recommend renting this, but I know Scotty really liked it. So Scott, what rental recommendation price would you give? I would say a three ninety nine rental. A three ninety nine. Okay. So yeah, if you like, really like cult films, then yeah, listen to Scott. Because <laughs> I, I found it enjoyable. Like this year has been a lot of uh, sevens for me. Like there has not mm-hmm. been a lot of like anything. I think there's technically only one film that is uh, above an eight. And we'll be talking about that shortly. But like everything else has been like about a 7, 7.5. But I've also been trying to be a little more harsher on my grading scale because I do tend to rate high and then years ago, why did I rate that so high? Like a couple months later. So I always bring down my score. So I'm trying to sit and think on the films a little longer before I put my rating in. And yep, um, this has been the year of seven so far because yeah, this is about a seven out of 10 for me. Awesome. Cool. Um, I guess we'll do the next one then, which we both saw. Yes, we did. And... I guess, should I introduce it? Because I watched it first or? Uh, yeah, because I just did the long night. So, okay. So, this is called A Banquet. Uh, this is very much a, so this is an English film. Uh, it's from England. <laughs> it's an English film. It's from England. <laughs> Fuck, I sounded dumb there. Uh, not only am I a bitch, I'm also dumb. <laughs> um, right, Tim and Daniel? <laughs> oh, my God. Tim's like, Heather's going to come to Australia and get really mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a second shark a kill in Australia this year, Tim. And I want you to know who it's going to be. It's going to be me taking you out. We're going to reenact open water. Yep. It's going to be you Heather. With, Heather's going to have a shark fin attached to her back and pretending yeah. to swim in the circle around Tim while he's out there fishing. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> and the whole time they're playing the baby shark song. Baby <laughs> shark. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Anyway. Tim's gonna go oh god make the music stop no no he's gonna be like oh crikey I need to open another Foster's <laughs> be careful where's my, though where's my veggie mite sandwich <laughs> be careful though if he sees you he may punch you because he thinks you're a shark and you know he it's likes true. to punch animals yeah like what kind of Australian punches animals like honestly <laughs> who does that um and then I'll come for Daniel. Oh, last. That'll be that's a then, title of a I got an idea for a new movie. We're gonna call it Shark Puncher, and Tim Davis is gonna be the lead. <laughs> you know, we're we're bugging Tim, but really Daniel is the problem. Yes. So <laughs> I think what we're gonna do, what was that movie we watched with them that we made them watch, which was horrible? It was the Outback oh, movie. Yeah, the was Outback, called, yeah. Was that what it's called? The Outback? Yeah. Daniel and I are gonna reenact that and I'm gonna make him drink anti. <laughs> And Daniel's going to be walking around drinking his own piss constantly. <laughs> Scrunches. <laughs> <laughs> num, 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 num. Anyway, back to, back to a banquet, which is an English film. Um, and <laughs> I feel so funny saying it's an English film made in England. It's ridiculous. All right, Heather, get back in the game here. All right, so family or famine is the tagline for this. Basically, this movie is a take on anorexia. And it's a really honest look at the decline that someone with anorexia will face and body dysmorphia. And it's very, very deep. It's very dialogue heavy. It's a very much a relationship film. I enjoyed it quite a bit, but I do think this is going to be a movie that is going to be a hit or miss for some people. Mm -hmm. I don't think Tim Davis will like this film. Um, I think that this film, if... (sighs) I think you really have to have a a real investment in relationship horror and you real investment in body image and body dysmorphia. I think if that is the case, you will enjoy this film. If not, you're probably going to think it's silly and over the top and that's, and that's okay. Um, Your thoughts, Scotty? I think you pretty much summed it up. Like uh, this, I really did enjoy it. Um, Got really good acting in it. Um, Mm. Especially the uh, main uh, daughter that is having all this stuff happen to her. Like she does really good fucking job. 
Um, and it's got some very uncomfortable, disturbing scenes with what's happening to her and like what is actually going on. And it's like the story is fascinating because you're just like, wait, what is I'm I need to keep watching because I'm curious what the fuck is going yeah. on here. Like it's very fascinating. Like I really did dig this movie a lot. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's it's definitely one of the better films that have come out this year um, in terms of acting and quality of relationship horror stuff. Um, so yeah, it's available on iTunes or Apple iTunes, Google Play, Voodoo, YouTube, Amazon. I think if you like what Scott and I have talked about, it is worth a $3.99 rental. But if it's not your thing, maybe skip over this one. Yeah. Right. But yeah, but I'd definitely say three ninety nine rental for sure. Now let's I'm gonna let Scotty talk about this bad boy because fuck this was a fucking good movie. Man. Yep, this is the one I was hinting at. This is my uh first nine out of ten, maybe nine point five out of ten for the year. Um this one is surprisingly a theater watch. I did not expect this movie to go to theaters, but uh Mark Nato had talked about it last a fest one of the festivals that he was watching. And at the time, it was called Eight for Silver, or The Eight for Silver. And mm -hmm. yeah, he was like praising the hell out of this movie, saying if it came out widely this year, it would have been his number one. Um, and I can see why. Uh, so I will read a synopsis, but this movie right now is called The Cursed, and that's what it is in theaters. Mm -hmm. Very dumb fucking title. I mean, the title makes sense because it does have to deal with a curse. Yeah. I, just like, I just like the unique title, The Eight for Silver, better. But uh. In the late 19th century, brutal land baron Seamus Lawrence slaughters a Roma clan, unleashing a curse on his family and village. In the days that follow, the townspeople are plagued by nightmares. Seamus' son, Edward, goes missing, and a boy is found murdered. The locals suspect a wild animal, but visiting pathologist John McBride warns of a more sinister presence lurking in the woods. This movie, holy fuck fucking shit is it just really well done like it's it's obviously 19th century so it's ty uh, period beast which mm -hmm. of course i love mm -hmm. um and if you can't tell it is a werewolf film like it's mm -hmm. pretty obvious like with the titles and all that mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i have to say this is one of the best werewolf films i have seen in a long fucking time like the a lot of the designs in this and a lot of the gore is all practical for one which mm -hmm. is incredible. The story is very well done and unique for a werewolf story while also blending in were uh, werewolf lore and mythology. So like it kind of, it brings in something that you're familiar with, but also twists it around a little bit and adds something unique. Um, and uh, yeah, I loved everybody. Like every character in this, I was invested with. Like I was invested in the story. Mm -hmm. The score was incredible. The cinematography was amazing. The werewolves looked very unique. They were. I loved like the, I loved it. Loved it. Yeah, like they're not your typical looking werewolf, and it, I love. It's very monstrous and frightening, and the way they the way they use the camera for some of the stuff in this too. It's just it's a brutal but amazing movie, and I'm so glad this went to theaters. Unfortunately, it just is probably not doing very well. We'll get to that in our Out of the Dark segment. But uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? Well, first off, I want to shout out a friend of mine, Mark Iverson from the UK. Mark is I what I would consider an expert on um, monster horror, universal monsters. He wrote a book on it that I'm going to be talking about, and he did a lot of research for it. And the werewolf legend started in Ireland. So this is the actual original folklore of what werewolves are. So automatically, I have more respect for this film because of that, I'll be honest. Uh, whenever a country who started a folklore actually talks about it, I like, this will probably be more accurate to the story. Right. Um, I think the werewolves in this are excellent, well done. I think the acting is amazing. And I took George. So Scott knows who George is. And George is the only person that will watch horror movies with me besides Scott. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like he's my only person in person that will watch it with me. So he's always my barometer, right? So I've taken him to see Halloween Kills and he watched um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I always ask him at the end, like, what did you think of that movie? You know, he saw last night in Soho. Like he's seen a lot of the popular ones. So we saw the movie last night and I said, what did you think? And he was like, oh man, that movie was fucking amazing. He's like, that was one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Nice. So that tells me how good that film is. It's not just Scott and I who are singing this praises. Uh, it is someone else who, who watches horror films. Like he watches them, but he's not like Scott and I that will watch everything. Yeah, he'd right? be more like the mainstream style horror fan. Yes, main, very mainstream style. And he was like, the acting was good. The acting was solid. He's like, I, I believe the characters. It was a perfect runtime. 
he's like the effects were good and he's like even there's a filming scene where um something is destroyed and the f- way they film it is incredible mm-hmm. like it's just it's it's so fucking well done and i think people will be at a loss if they do not see this film yeah and you know for the ones like i'll be getting more into this too but uh you know for the ones that complain about there's no good horror in theaters <laughs> only like franchises or whatever well, then you are doing your, then you are needing to put your money where your mouth is because this movie is a must fucking see and it's not getting the love that it should. It certainly is not. And we will talk about that more in our Out of the Dark segment. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, it is in theaters here still. And I believe it's still in theaters for you as well, Scott. I think so. And I think it's just getting less and less showtimes. Okay. But uh, yeah, if you can go see this in theaters, fucking do it. This movie is incredible. I know there are a few people that didn't like it, but like they didn't say it was a bad film. It was just like, yeah, this didn't work for me. Like I haven't heard anyone just say this is a horrible film. Like no, like everyone at least has res- seen it, has respected it, or loved it. Yeah, it's it's incredible. I really, yeah, I nothing but praise for this film. Because yeah, I I was not sure if you were gonna like it, just because I know you're not oh, a fan man. of a lot of the period piece stuff. Yeah, and but this was a period piece that wasn't boring. I don't like some period pieces because I find them boring and slow. Right this wasn't boring and slow like it was it was up it was fast paced enough that the plot moved along and it made sense as it as it continued to move Mm -hmm. along right like every scene had a purpose yeah and that's what i really respect is when every scene has a purpose and it makes sense yep completely agree with that right so yeah scott and i and george give it our approval uh, cause he, when he left, he, when he left, he's like, make sure you tell everyone on your podcast that I liked it because, <laughs> because I do use him as a, as a barometer, right? right? Like he, he, you know, Scott and I may be like, oh man, this film's really great. And he'll be like, oh, it's all right, guys. Like that's cause you like horror and you like everything. Right. Um, right. So yeah, we really, really recommend checking it out. So that concludes our 22, our 2022 watches at this point. Hopefully we've given you some stuff to check out i think we've done pretty good for watches this year with sharing them with people yeah like um and that we haven't really hit too many turds this year no we no a lot of stuff has been average but there's some that really stand out and i think again the ones that stand out for me so far and i can just read them off in case people are wondering what they should watch and they don't remember from last episode uh here before was a big one that i really enjoyed I also enjoyed The Privilege on Netflix, uh, Shut In, and I would say The Curse are the ones that I will probably talk about again. Oh, and They Live in the Gray, I think, is another one that is quite good that I think people should should check out um, that I really, really enjoyed. Yeah, but I was going to say, like, uh, I think for me, it's uh, The Cursed, Ditched, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, See For Me, Arctic Void, The Free Fall, Long Night and Here Before, and A Banquet, are all, and Shut In. Those are all, like, high up there for me right now. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. So you've heard it here. We've given you some stuff to think about, some stuff to watch. Uh, beyond Scream 5 and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so if there's other stuff that's out there that you're interested in. So for older watches, I have two on here. Uh, Scotty, did did you have any or no? Nope. Oh, Scotty. Scotty's too busy living his best life. Um, so I watched, well, yeah, I think you've seen at least one of these. You could probably talk about it, right? Uh, yeah, the last one on here. I the can. last one? So I saw- and that's t- what I'm thinking of. It, it probably is. So I saw Take Shelter 2011, and I was really unsure what this film would be. I've actually skipped over it a lot because I thought- Oh man, it's going to be like some fucking stupid film from like, you know, it's, it's on Tubi. It looks so cheap because of the cover. I thought it was going to be some dumb, dumb, a dumb bird horror film. This is not a fucking dumb bird horror film. This film is a psychological horror film that talks about toxic masculinity. It talks about, um, mental illness it is it is fucking incredible the acting in this film is so good so the main character is michael shannon yeah i was just looking it up because i'm like is this what i'm thinking of and like i have not seen this but i know of this movie and i've seen that was michael shannon i'm like yep that's the one that i was thinking of so and i have to look at this i'm gonna have to watch this then so jessica chastain is in this film and she was also in it mm-hmm. the sequel she was also in the help she was also in crimson peak she was in Zero Dark Thirty. Like this, this woman has acting fucking chops. So it 
solid solid actors the two leads in this film fuck this movie is good it is a free watch on tubi if you haven't watched this movie yet please check it out it is so it keeps you guessing throughout it if what is real and what is not real and i really think people are going to really really enjoy this film and i strongly strongly recommend it nice yeah because this is one that i've i've heard of but yeah, i just never seen but now i'm gonna probably take time to watch this oh, i strongly it. recommend it i think you'll love it absolutely awesome and then the next one is <laughs> stitches <laughs> um it's about a clown yep that's <laughs> the one i'm thinking of <laughs> It's an Irish film. Um, it's really funny. I'll be honest. Like I, the clown in this is such a fucking trashy dude. And then he gets killed at this birthday party, and he comes back to haunt the kids that killed him. And it's 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 really funny. Like it's really really funny. I really really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know what your thoughts were of it, Scotty, when you watched it. Oh, I found it absolutely ridiculous in the best way possible. Like it. He he plays such a fun killer, like killer clown in this movie. And like some of the kills are just hilarious what he does with them. <laughs> right. Like he's just such a fucking asshole. <laughs> like he comes back, I think it's like 10 years or eight years later, or six years later, to, you know, Tom, the kid whose birthday this clown died at, comes back to fucking knock them off one by one. <laughs> it's just funny. Like it's just a funny, silly movie. So if you're looking for a ridiculous clown film. Um, it's Irish, so there's some really funny Irish humor in it as well. I recommend checking it out. You can find it on Amazon, Vudu, Shutter. Uh, it's on both Shutter channels. It's 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 a good time. It's a really good time. Nice. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it because yeah, I remember watching this a few years back and going, "This is so silly, but it's just so damn entertaining." It is right. It's just it's dumb. And so you got Take Shelter, which is a very serious film. Uh, film festival film you know dropped in 2011 really well acted really strong actors very serious plot line and then you got fucking like stitches yeah right like <laughs> the complete opposite of that right um my dog's shaking in the background but anyway so we're gonna break into our what's new um i know i just went first with my older watches i don't know do you want to talk about your song first scotty uh sure I'm at, and mine's not just gonna be the song but it's uh the, ar- the artist okay yeah uh, so, yeah, I am uh, bringing to the table today Amigo the Devil, who is a gothic folk horror uh, music artist. He's, uh, I know I've told Tim Davis about this because I know Tim Davis is a huge fan of Dead South, and the Dead South is one of my favorite bands as well. I, if you are a fan of that, like, kind of like darker folk music style, then I recommend Amigo the Devil. He does some just very dark songs that are just along the lines of something that'd be in the horror film. But, like, he has, like, songs about Jeffrey Dahmer and, like, one uh, one of the songs is Murder at the Bingo Hall, which is one of my favorites, and also Quiet as a Rat. And the videos are also just kind of dark and twisted and a little bit disturbing. So, yeah, if you're just in the, like, if you like that style, like, folk, blues, like, uh, rap, folk, but, uh, or blues, uh, yeah, I guess just, like, the old, con- old school country folk music style, then I would recommend him because he is an amazing artist. Awesome. Yeah, you played him for me when you came up here, and I really liked him. He was really, really good. Yeah, he's got a very uh, unique voice. Yeah, very unique. No, it was really awesome. I uh, And it's good that we're bringing different music to the table for people to listen to. You know, as we talked about before, our what news section is to kind of promote music, books, songs, or, well, music and songs are the same thing, uh, movies that may be horror adjacent, or whatever, conventions that we go to stuff we check out that maybe even stores there's actually a store that i just saw in hamilton which is where i i live near um the other day and it was called cursed items Ooh, yeah so i may go in there and just talk about my experience with going in there and share the link so we're just trying to share different things uh what i want to share today is i kind of talked about it earlier but i have a friend in the uk his name is mark iverson i actually met him through Another friend um, named Barry, who hosts a online YouTube uh, trivia nights that I had attended a couple of times. And it's funny because I was the only one from North America. The rest of them were all from Scotland, England, and Ireland. And so they all have these like accents. And then I'm there with my fucking boring Canadian (laughs) accents. And of course, they're all like super big movie buffs. And I'm like, not (laughs) in comparison. Anyway. I met Mark there um, and Mark and I became Facebook friends. And then in my looking at going to the UK, I reached out to him 
to just be like, hey, I may be coming out to the UK, anything you recommend. And he was kind enough that he was like, oh, you know, yeah, here's this and this and this and this. And, you know, he was very, very friendly. And we kind of developed a friendship from there. And he wrote several books. He recently wrote one on Vincent Price uh, that you would probably find very interesting. This book actually has a little bit about Vincent Price in it. And I'm going to show Scotty. It is called Cursed Horror Stars. So it talks about, oh, sorry, Vincent Price isn't in this one. My apologies. It's Lon Chaney Jr., Basil Rathbone, Peter Lorre, Bella Lugosi, and Robert Quarry. And it talks about five noted 20th century actors who all at one time or another in their careers became associated with horror film roles and who were all facing restrictive typecasting and they had to battle their own more personal uh, personal demons. And I've read the first bit. The first bit was on Lonnie Cheney Jr. And holy fuck was it eye-opening. Like, really? Because he talked about his dad's history. So, you know, his dad, like Lonnie Trainey Jr. Sr. was the original Phantom in the silent era, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So he goes on to talk about that. And he talks about the shift from silent films to what they called talking films or talkies and how much it led to silent era actors being out of work because people were afraid that their voice would not sound appealing is that not interesting to you wow yeah that some people couldn't make the transition over because the studio didn't think their voices would sound good enough wow right so anyway yeah, that's that's interesting it is and he has the entire filmography in it unfortunately Lon Chaney Jr. had some problems with alcohol that really did affect his career and it goes into great detail about his role as the wolf man and how much time it took for him to be in the makeup chair and etc it's a very good read the book is about 30 dollars off of amazon and i feel a little privileged because mark and i usually try to connect about once a week over facetime it's tough because um there's obviously a five hour difference and i right. half of our conversation is me quizzing him on the book like half of it is like okay mark i want to know how did you find out about abcd and I've learned a lot about Universal Monster films and prior to 1960s, he seems to be a very, very knowledgeable person about, about that information. So I'm kind of promoing him a lot more than I would someone else because he's a friend of mine, but that also because the book's really good, honestly, like, and I'm not a big reader. Um, and this book is easy to read and easy to follow so much so that I may give it to Scotty to read. At some oh, point. Nice. I think he'll enjoy it. And I thought about buying in the Vincent Price one um, because it's, I think it's, it's really interesting stuff. And he's working on his third book right now. He's written for, I guess, a vampire magazine in the UK. Um, his views on Bram Stoker's Dracula 2000 or 1992 is hilarious. Uh, some of the funniest shit I've ever heard some English man go off on. Um, but yeah, very, very cool dude. Very good book. And I recommend it if anyone's interested in learning about these older horror stars and what happened to them. Hell yeah, that sounds awesome, actually. Yeah, he's a cool dude. I uh, I said to him, if we ever do Vincent Price, I'm like, Scotty loves Vincent Price, we'll bring you on. And you and Scotty can talk about Vincent Price because yeah. I, I don't know a lot about Vincent Price. I know very, very little. Uh, but I think you two could have a good conversation about it. Yeah, because I definitely would love to do an episode on Vincent Price at some point just because, you know, my love for the man. I know. he's your He's your boyfriend, actually. He is. Right. So anyway, that's what we what's new. So please check out those two artists, uh, a, a performing artist, a singer, and also a writer, um, if you're interested in expanding your horror knowledge. So we will take a brief break. We will hear from one of our many friends at the Legion Podcast Network, and we will be back to talk about our very gory and intense fucking French films that we watched. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, just, a, just a bit. Right? It's, uh, it was a little intense there, for sure. Uh, but yes, so after these messages, we'll be right back. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Oh, necrophilia. Oh, oh, oh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't, don't push it. Cinema PsyOps is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, crude. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of. It's unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. 
Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you shouldn't be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this like little nerd glee with everything that kept up. Little history doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How did you watch one. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. And we're back. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're continuing our horrors from around the world. I'm not sure how long we will do this for, but I, I know we got a couple different, I got at least a few more countries in mind that I'd like at least to uh, dive into some of their films because I'm enjoying this because I have fun like exploring these other films that I've never seen before. And, you know, once again, just kind of broadens our horizons in the horror genre. Um, but yeah, for this episode, we decided to go for the French horror films because it uh, between... French and Spanish, I say those are the two more popular foreign-style fil- horror films out there. Yeah. I was like, because they do seem to have a lot, or at least get talked about the most. So I figured hit the two big ones up first. Um, and yeah, we decided to pick four different films, all from like 2000 and above, um, that kind of represent how I feel, like kind of represent what the French film, hor- French horror films are like. Agreed, 100%. No, these were some solid, fucking gory films, man. Yeah, like the French don't hold back. <laughs> no, where where the Spanish is more subtle and doesn't really uh, dive into the gore and violence, like it's more just cerebral and like yeah. psychological. Yeah, no, it's psychological. French more, yeah, French is more just like in your face, like no, we're gonna make you uncomfortable with what we're showing you on yeah. screen. Yeah, like it's like there's a lot of cutting and a lot of blood, mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of fucking fucked up shit um yeah i think you sum that up perfectly spanish films are really more about like the subtle horror yeah. but the other stuff is much heavier i agree 100 percent. yeah like in uh the one of the first ones we'll be talking about is the very first french film i'd ever seen too so yeah well i guess we'll get right to it then why don't we introduce our number one film well, not number one but our <laughs> first film that we'll be discussing today all right so the first film is high tension or if i believe it's hot tension uh, for John. <laughs> oh, I could, I could go into my uh, jokes with the French, but let's not, I'm not going to. <laughs> they get, they get. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, High Tension was released June 18th, 2003. And the synopsis is a beautiful young French woman, Alex. Uh, I'm going to try to pronounce her, act, the actress's name, Mawen Le Besco, travels beautiful. out to the country to visit her family and brings along her friend, Marie, which is Cecilia de France. Soon after they get settled in the secluded home, Alex's parents are brutally attacked by a psychotic truck driver, Felipe Nahon, who proceeds to stalk the two women as well. When the killer kidnaps Alex in his truck, Marie hides in the back to try and rescue her, but the bloodshed is far from over. Um, so this was a first time watch for you, so I am curious to hear what you thought. First of all, I want to applaud your speaking of the French language and pronouncing those names. Oh, I, uh, well, thank you. I want to give it a moment to congratulate you on your excellent pronunciation. Well, I don't know if they're correct or not, but I at least tried. <laughs> I think you did an amazing job. Um yeah, I this movie's really fucking gory as well. Like it's a very basic plot line. You know, we're not looking at anything too over the top here. It it really does go from oh, we arrived at the summer home to shit's going to get fucked up. Mm-hmm. And when <laughs> like when they like uh, I'm trying to to think of how I want to phrase this. Obviously, you get the indication that Marie has feelings for Alex that may or may not be reciprocated. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a scene where she sees her in the shower and she later masturbates, which you assume is to the thought of her friend. Yeah. Um, It is during her masturbation that this truck driver shows up and creates utter fucking chaos, killing the dog first. And then proceeding to kill her parents, as well as her brother, I believe. Yep. Uh, and kidnapping uh, Alex for some reason. 
And so just so, yet again, we give spoilers here, everybody. So in case you haven't seen High Tension, we do give spoilers in this section. Yeah. So there's a cat and mouse game that occurs between um, Marie and the truck driver. So she follows the truck driver to a gas station where he kind of has this back and forth with the clerk and the clerk ends up being killed by the truck driver. And Marie is, you know, constantly trying to stop this truck driver from killing her friend. And her friend's very panicky. Even when Marie's there, her friend is completely freaking out all the time and trying to scream. I, there's a twist ending here that happens. Hmm. I didn't quite get how the twist ending made sense. <laughs> oh yeah. God, it's, I, um, so Basically, there's a whole bunch of gore that happens. You know, this truck driver brutalizes this guy at the store. Uh, He has brutalized her parents. They're at this secluded fucking place in the middle of nowhere. Alex manages to get out. Marie kind of frees her and she freaks out at Marie and shoots her in the stomach and runs away from her. And the screaming, you killed my family. You killed my family, which is, I think, around that time that we see that the police, Mm -hmm. so she called the police, which I didn't get. Yeah. Alex, so Marie calls the police at one point. The police come to the gas station. They watch the civilian, like the, the civilians cameras, and they realize that Marie is really the one that killed the gas station attendant. So you assume that she also killed her parents, Mm -hmm. the, the family. Which I don't think they show us. They don't show um, us what they're doing, do they? No, I don't think they do flashbacks. I, th- I think I think they do flashbacks here and there of some things to try to tie it in. But yeah, like they don't do a good job of doing that. No, because so, the yeah. reveal doesn't make sense. So I guess there's a there's a scene at the beginning when they're about to leave the house where Alex is in the back of what appears to be a truck, mm-hmm. and Marie climbs in with her, and the truck starts moving, and they go together, and then you see. Marie eventually gets out of the truck and is driving a car. Yeah, which so was I at the gas station. Assu- which was at the gas station. So I assume Marie was driving the truck or that car the entire time and envisioned it being a... Like, there's just a lot of holes in yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's, like, the whole reveal does not make any fucking sense. Like, the only thing... Because, yeah, Marie is the truck driver. Like, we... Like, that, like, the... Or the killer trucker guy. And, yeah, there's a lot of scenes where... Marie is with Alex watching the trucker kill somebody. So, like, very early on in the beginning, um, Marie is trying to, like, comfort and uh, save Alex, and then she hears Alex's little brother outside screaming and running away, and they go to the window and look and see the trucker outside shoot at their brother, at her little brother, and kill him. But if that's supposed to be Marie, why is she up in the bedroom with Alex when she would be technically down in the cornfield chasing after her little brother? It makes no sense. So the only thing I can picture, only thing I can do to wrap my brain around this is think that she is uh, suffering from, I guess would be uh, like a disconnect or a, she's disassociated with her own mind. So like when she is the trucker, like she's in her head still picturing herself as Marie like trying to save her and whatnot, but she's actually like just out of body seeing like the killer as someone else. I, it makes no sense to me. Like, cause a lot of this stuff, like how does she, how is she driving the truck while also in the back of the truck while also driving a car following the truck? Like none of that makes any sense to me at all. Yeah. I, I think you're right. I think it was trying to play on mental health and, you know, personality disorder and that she was in the field killing the the brother obviously Alex saw it and then she kidnapped Alex which is why Alex kept freaking out every time mm-hmm. Marie was with her um and not calming down and being so hysterical was because she knew Marie had done these things um let's see here there's when she unties Marie at the truck or the car or whatever it is um and marie kind of like shoots her takes off you know she's in that car she a, a gentleman stops to help her and you get oh. a fucking gory scene yeah. like a chainsaw like the blood in this and stuff i think they were just like oh the film doesn't make sense oh it's okay there's lots of blood and killing it will be great and it is <laughs> like there's lots of blood and killing it's definitely a violent violent film about obsession mm-hmm. but it just didn't make a heck of a lot of sense and you figure out at the end that marie is in love with alex she keeps saying to her tell me we'll always be together blah 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 and then 
Marie stabs her, but she doesn't die. She just kind of goes to a mental institution. And that's where the film begins with her sitting there. Like you see these two feet rocking back and forth saying like, we'll always be together. We'll always be together. We'll never let anything come between us. We'll always be together. So it's, it's a very gory movie. And I feel like that was the point of it was to be over the top bloody, but it didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. Like, um, like this, like you said, it's like a basic story, but then they add in that twist that, yeah, like just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, you're watching it for the bloodshed and the gore. Um, I believe this was the, what kind of brought in the uh, era of French extremes, like, cause what these, a lot of these films are called. Yeah. Just cause they, uh, you know, get extremely violent and are kind of dark and twisted. Uh, this was directed by Alexander Aja, who is really freaking well known now. Like he's done yeah. a lot of horror films. So this was kind of like his step into the genre. Like, I'm sure he's done stuff before this, but this is kind of what brought him into the limelight and made him popular. I can see why, because, yeah, once again, really well directed. It's just the storyline really doesn't make any sense with that twist. Like, they could have literally yeah. taken the twist out of there and it just been a generic killer trucker shows up at a house, kills everybody, steals Alex, and Ray chases after him. That could have been the story and it would have been perfectly fine without that twist. Yeah, and I think that, I don't know, I don't... I think if you turn off your brain and you're like, sure, I'll just accept that, you know, we're, we're trying to logic it. Right. And I think that's what makes it. I think if you want to enjoy this film for just for what it is, which is a bloodshed film that has some amazing kills, a chainsaw that's used in this with that guy. And then they're torturing Alex in the car with the chainsaw is fucking incredible. Um, I, I think if you can just watch it and enjoy it for that, it's fine. But I think if you look too deep into this, you're going to be seriously disappointed because it doesn't make any sense. So just exactly if you watch it, go for going, go in, going, you know, this is going to be bloody. It's going to be gory. It's going to be intense, high tension, but it's not going to make a lot of sense. And just no. enjoy the ride. It would be because there's not much to unpack here. It's a pretty basic slasher film, but the bloodshed, the special effects are quite good. Oh, absolutely. And it's very tense. Yes. Hence high tension. Mm-hmm. Like it. Right. It's it's like, cause it's, yeah, it's still an entertaining movie. You just gotta be able to take your, uh, like shut off your brain for it. Yeah. It's, it's, I would watch it again. Uh, but I, I didn't think it was one of the better French films I've seen. Usually French films can do a much like, and it's funny because we go from something like high tension to another film we're going to talk about later, which is all about plot and all about, you know, connection between characters and stuff. And, you know, this one did wasn't, it didn't make a lot of sense, but it's fun and it's gory and it's gross. And another one that was fun and gory was uh, the next one we're going to talk about. Well, this one really wasn't that gory, but. I was, guess not. It was more suspenseful. You're right. Yeah. This is like, right. one. Of, I think this is the last like violent one of the four. Yeah. But, uh, this one was more suspenseful. I was just trying to do a bridge. Yep. Yeah, I know you were. <laughs> but sorry. I didn't mean to ruin that for you. That's but, uh, okay. But yeah, this one is uh, also, I think, kind of labeled in that French extremes because it was like around the same time as Martyrs, Inside, High Tension, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, this one is called Them, or also known as Ills, I think I-L-S. Um, but it is released July 19th, 2016, or 2006. A uh, teacher shares a remote mansion with her novelist partner in Romania. Their weekend ideal is shattered when she wakes to a strange noise and then... With the film playing out in real time, the pair are hunted through their home by hooded stalkers who seem to have no other motive than to kill them. As they scrabble into nooks and crannies, desperately trying to stay ahead of their assailants, a chilling climax beckons. Uh, this was a first time watch for me. I know. I think it was a first time watch for you as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I have heard about this film. I knew the reveal at the end, so like, I wasn't a surprise to me. Oh, but you knew? Yeah. Oh, cool. I didn't know. Yeah, that one I knew just because uh, you know I've heard about it on podcast being talked about before. But yeah, I've also heard this was what inspired the Strangers, but I have no idea if that's actually accurate or not. But like, well, it has I can a see why similar. it's basically kind of the same films. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, it has a lot of similarities. Right. Like, this one, uh, where it uh, where high tension relies on the gore and violence, this one relies on a lot more just, like, uh, I guess, tension, atmosphere, and suspense. Yeah, totally. This one really doesn't have a whole lot of violence to it. No, um, not at all. But yeah, this is basically a home invasion stock film. Um, 
And yeah, like I found this to be like a really just like harrowing tale. Of, like, cause yeah, there is no reason why these people are being stalked. Just once again, it's cause you know, it just happenstance. You're at the house and they decided to come there. And yeah. Uh, the reveal when it does happen, you're just like, if like it's it is a shock because you don't expect it, and it's uh, and the end reveal ends up being that these killers are just teenagers, like teenage yeah. boys, like young They're 10 to 15 years old, yeah. Because I had to read into it because I was like, how old are these fucking kids? <laughs> when you realize it's children, so she's a teacher, by the way, it starts off with her being a teacher starting at school, and then like. So they're at this random mansion for the weekend. Mm -hmm. I thought I wasn't sure if they lived there or they were just renting it or what the deal was. Yeah, I think it was kind of like a getaway type thing. Yeah, I guess so. Um, and these kids start stalking them. And of course, at first, you don't know it's kids. There's a really good suspense scene that takes place in the attic area where there's drop plastic that the guy appears from. Kind of reminded me, I know what you did last summer. Yes. Um, and I thought that was really well done. And the chase scene, so this movie's an hour and 13 minutes. It's short. Like, it, yeah. it gets to the point, and it goes. Uh, you get a little bit of tension building with, you know, shit happening around the house, the phone being cut, they can't call the police, the car gets stolen, you know, they can't escape that way. And then there's this kind of chase scene out in the field to these underground tunnels. And that's yeah. where the real climax happens. And it's a very, very quick movie. It's very much like a home invasion gone wrong film. The underground tunnel scene, there's a scene where the guy is being tortured and he's being tortured by one kid and the other kid's telling the other one to stop. Mm -hmm, but then that little kid shows up later and uh, yeah, fucks things up too. Right. And then you think this little kid's going to help them escape. And he takes them to this area where they climb up a ladder. He lets her climb up and then he pushes the guy off and he gets taken. And the whole time they're saying, why wouldn't you pl come play with us? Come play with us. Don't you want to play with us? And stuff like that. So it's, I don't, I don't know. It's not a bad movie. I, I feel like we're being really hesitant with these first two because I don't know if there's a lot to unpack. Like they're very no. fucking basic films. Like couple goes away. Couple gets stalked. Yeah. Cut phone line, steal car, invade house, chase scene in house, escape house, man gets hurt, woman saves man, man gets pulled away, she has a further chase scene throughout the tunnels, she gets to a tunnel that comes out by the highway, but there's a drain grate, so she can't yep. get through. And then she gets pulled away. And then she gets pulled away, and then the ending scene is you see these kids, though one of them obviously got killed because he got pushed off the roof, and I feel like there was no... Well, no, because he ended up getting back up, like, during that scene. He gets Did pushed he get off the roof. Yeah, she looks back over the railing, and you see him just kind of, like, shake it off, and he starts getting up. And How the, the house. fuck did he get up? I have no freak, especially, well, like, get I guess. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, <laughs> I, I will say, kids are a lot more resilient to, like, damage like that. Like, they can fall and easily get up where if someone like us fell off, we're probably down for the count. Yeah, but he hit his head. Yeah, that that's, like, it's right. still, yeah. Right. Like, I don't believe that. That's fine. It's a movie. It's sensationalized. And then at the end, you find out that this was based on true events and that there was a couple. And I tried to research it. So apparently there's this legend that there was a couple who went away and they were stalked by kids and killed. But obviously the movie, a lot of people have argued, has over-sensationalized it. Shock mm -hmm. faint. Uh, I thought the acting was good enough. The The guy and the girl that were in this were fine. I believed that they were scared. I believe that they were panicked. I think she did a really good job of reacting to the situation. Like, I think yep. their acting was great. I just think it was such a basic plot line that <laughs> there's not much to say. Like, you know, and it's it's fine if you enjoyed like that, in, that escaping horror. You want something that's short and sweet. You really like The Strangers. You really like that kind of theme. I think this is a great movie to watch. It's not nearly as you know, paced out as The Strangers is. Like, there's no of that creepy scare. It's like, oh, no, you're scared. They're invaded. They're here. They're going to fuck shit up. Yeah, like, they, and like, like it says in the synopsis, like, you're watching the film play out in real time. Like, it's not, like, there is no cuts away. Like, this is just yeah. all happening, like, scene for scene. And I think that's what it is, is, yeah, there is no story. You're just watching a home yeah. invasion happen. Like, there is really no plot. No, and there's no, like, for everyone who's like, oh, I like background about the characters. There's no background here. It's a teacher no. and her novelist boyfriend, and they go to a fucking house. Like, it's, and that's fine. I personally am not somebody in a movie like this where I need character development. Like, right. I can put myself in that situation of I went, you know, somewhere and this shit happens to me. I don't need to get to know who the character is or 
any of that shit. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, good film. Both of these films, High Tension and this one is good films, but they're just very basic films. And I think they're going to be films that you enjoy if A, you like a lot of gore or B, for them, you enjoy the home invasion. Yep. And I will, and I have noticed a trend. I think Martyrs is the only one that is different amongst the French films, but uh, most of them do have just like basic plot line. Yeah. Like, yeah. And there, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Like it's just a simple basic plot line, just, you know, done with French gore, French style and lots of gore. Yeah. Like absolutely usual. absolutely though we do get a little deeper with our last two there is yeah. a little bit more to unpack with those two so why don't we move unless you there's anything more you wanted to add about these no, other um, two well with uh them i will say i did like the uh whole where it kind of fades to black and just kind of gives like a scroll across the screen of like you know this was based on a real story um when the little when the youngest kid was interviewed they asked like why did you do this and he just says, because they wouldn't play with us. I was yeah. like, that's, that's kind of a creepy way to end it. It is a creepy way to end it. and But yet again, I can't find any proof of the real story actually right, happening. Exactly. So like, it's so over the top, right? But yeah. And speaking of over the top, let's jump yep. into our next film. Yep. Um, so I'm not sure if this is just called Frontiers or Frontier I, I don't know like what the parenthesis around the yes is representing, but uh. It was released January 23rd, 2008, also part of the French extreme wave that came through in that like decade. Uh, the synopsis is a gang of young criminals flee Paris in a bid for freedom, only to find themselves ensnared by a family of Nazi cannibals intent on breeding a new Aryan master race. Yeah. yeah oh, this, boy. <laughs> this movie had the purge, like sprinkle a little purge. Sprinkle a little Texas Chainsaw Massacre dinner scene. Um, sprinkle, and I and I think that's fine, by the way. I'm not criticizing the yeah. film for it at all. Uh, it was also a film festival movie that came out. And basically the synopsis of it, because I did have to read Wikipedia to make sure I was following along. So there's a far-right candidate reaches the second round of elections for French presidency, sparking riots in Paris. So there's a gang. They need to leave it. It's made up of Muslim Arab youths and they rob, they pull off a robbery, but they get shot. And the one guy has to go to the hospital. He dies and the other ones are on the run. And that's where they end up at this inn with the money that they have. And <laughs> I think the inn scene is actually pretty interesting. So these two dudes go in first and they're sitting there and there's these two very beautiful women who are kind of coming on to them and they end up having this like foursome, threesome. Yeah, there's like this wild night of crazy sex. Looks crazy like. sex, right? And then they're like eating food afterwards. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> Just chilling and being like, let's eat. And they're staying in their room and then this police officer guy shows up and there's some really clever dialogue here where he's like, did you bang my sisters? And they're like, yeah. He's like, what are my sister's horse? Or like, no. He's like, well, did you enjoy it? Like, it's it's really actually fun to watch how he's this guy that's portraying a police officer is kind of playing mind games with these two yeah. young kids. Um, anyway, they figure out that something is very wrong and they try to escape, but they can't. Uh, meanwhile, the gang has been separated. So the girl's brother dies in the hospital. She's with, I think, her boyfriend. Yep. Right. They arrive at the inn as well because their friends have admit had told them that's where they are. And things just escalate. They meet the head of the family of the people that own this inn, and it turns out that they are Nazi cannibals. Yeah, straight <laughs> up. This, right? Like, straight up Nazi cannibals. And they have decided that they, the girl, is going to be their new mother, Breeder, basically. Breeder. So she's going to be wedded off to the guy that's pretending to be the cop or is the cop or whatever the case is. And there's a lot of fucking gore. Uh, there's a lot of violence that occurs in this, like all the other French films. And the ending scene is probably the most violent where she fights back. But I don't know. What stood out for you, Scott, throughout this? Oh, man. Um, so, well, one thing I noticed, so when you were uh, talking about, like, the whole crazy four-way, three-way sex thing, mm -hmm. um, if you didn't know that uh, these people were, like, neo-Nazis, you would probably instantly know once you've seen the blonde woman's back tattoo of the Iron Eagle. <laughs> yes, yes. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> so you just see that, like, uh-oh. <laughs> right. Um, but, yeah, like, uh, what stands out for me in this film is, uh, like, this whole, they have this whole underground facility, which has all these uh, twisted-looking, monstrous humans down there. 
Yep. Which you later find out is this petite little girl's children. Yeah. That is basically just all these uh, people are fucked up looking because of inbred and being just like, and they're just literally down there and being fed cannibal scraps, basically. So it's kind of almost like people under the stairs, too. Yeah. Right? Like, it's it's a really, like, it's an interesting film. It's like a little bit of every horror film mixed into a mixing bowl, and they made this horror cake of weirdness. Yeah, like, they, uh, then they end up having to, like, cut the main girl's hair, because, uh, you know, she looks, uh, she's brunette, so she needed her hair to be cut short like a boy's to, like, be more along the lines of the Aryan race, beautiful yeah. people type, blah, blah, blah. Yep, like, yep. And the head of the family is total freaking German Nazi gross looking dude. Even carries a freaking Luger for his gun. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked up. Yeah. He's wearing he's... like a Nazi uniform and everything. Like it is uh, fucked up. Like, and that's where it's like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because it's like this total fucked up dinner scene. And oh man, is it fucked? Like they force her to get married and they do a toast and that guy kisses her forcibly and then she gets a gun though and puts it to the head of the family's head. And there's this crazy standoff. Yeah. Like crazy like... standoff that occurs. Yeah, like there is just because there's like brothers, because there's multiple people in this family. Like, there's yes, the, there's the two women, there's the brute mother girl, little girl type situation, the head of the household, then there's the cop, then there's like the butcher, and then there is like, I guess you would call him like the wrecker, the guy that's going to get wrecks and bring people back, or just like kind of like another more aggressive character in the family that is more violent, like and willing to do damage. Um, but oh man, yeah, yeah, some of the like what this film is is just a chaotic ride for these poor people and man some of the stuff they show like the achilles tendon snapping of the uh of the boyfriend oh man to keep him from running oh my god that uh tim was in the other room because he's just like nope i am not watching this film he's oh like, it's, I... it was intense it was intense yeah and when he heard me going oh god oh god because they were putting them <laughs> pliers yeah. up against that guy's achilles tendons he's going Oh God, if Scott, if I'm hearing Scott go, oh God, he's like, I am staying in this room and not looking out there. I'm like, don't look, don't look. Oh my God. No, this is bad. Oh, this is bad. Like it had, it got a visceral reaction out of me. Like, cause once it was again, vicious. yeah, was they vicious. just, they show you shit to make you uncomfortable. Like it was definitely like that dinner scene leading up to like sh Carl getting shot in the head. And then like, oh no, like, sorry, who shoots who? So in the confusion, Hans grabs the rifle, shoots and kills Von Glister in the confusion. Char Carl shoots Hans and dead in return. And then Yasmin escapes, who's the chick that's been captured. And then there's a whole explosion of the room and they're still trying to fucking kill her. And she's trying to get away. Like, it's just a very, very intense movie. Yeah. Um, and and what is her name? Yasmin? Yasmin, I think. Yeah, Yasmin, she, man, I'm talking about an amazing final girl because fuck does she put up a fight. She really does. And I think that this film reminds me a lot of Martyrs in the sense that there's a lot going on, but it's not overly deep. Like I yeah. wouldn't say that it's a, it's a deep film. It's, it's basically using far right and racism and nazism as a horror venue yeah like this right? could have been in a, this could have been in one of our uh in our political episode with darren i bet just because like it does talk about like the uh far right and the riots that are caused by this and like the whole unrest that is going on the civil unrest absolutely it's it's very well done that way and yeah like i think you said it really perfectly there's not tons of huge messages behind french films like, it's usually just, and even when I think about Get In, which I watched last year, it was the same thing. Family moves out of house. Other family they rent it to. Family refuses to leave. Tries to get back into house. Big violent fight occurs. So it's it's very much simplistic pop points, but it's always over the top gory and intense. Yeah. And they never shy away from the blood of it. And I think that's really, really interesting. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Martyrs is the only exception because that one does have more of a uh, deeper message behind it with the whole, like, uh, you know, s trying to get to that higher level after death type situation. But yeah, most of the other ones are just very, very simple plots that just have the added layer of, like, we're going to make you uncomfortable during these during these scenes. Yeah, and even Martyrs, like, I don't think it was overly deep. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was, yeah, I get Lat was thrown in there, but we could argue the same with high tension and, like, True. It's schizophrenia and she doesn't know who she is, right? Like, and, it, and none of it really always makes sense. A lot of the stuff is kind of 
very over the top, but the gore of it, like that shooting scene at the dinner table, the scene with the pigs where they basically sacrifice that guy in the fucking pig pen and she's crawling through the mud and like mm-hmm. it's it's a very dirty, gross, intense film. And you just kind yeah. of get like locked into the violence of it. It's just very violent. T- and it's two hours. It's a long film. Right. It's a violent two hours. It's a very violent two hour film um, with a, I guess you could say happy ending. <laughs> I guess you could say. Kind of, um, yeah. I mean, right? she escaped. She escaped. <laughs> and the endings I find of French films are like, and it ends. Like, yeah. they're like, you know, high tension. They're like, and she's crazy, and it ends. And, you know, in them, and they're dead, and then it ends. And Frontiers, and she runs into cops, and we don't know what happens. Right? Like, there's right. just a end. <laughs> yep, they're like, we don't need to go any further. <laughs> right? Except for the last one we're going to talk about, which did give more detail at the end. Yeah. Um, But I did find this one very, very gory, very well done. I think if you're a gore hound... And you enjoy the concepts like the crazy cannibals from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre or um, what's the other one? When Wrong Turn. Yep. You know, if you enjoy that shit, I think you'll enjoy this. Um, with oh, the yeah. back setting of the purge happening kind of thing, right? That yeah, exactly. right extremity is coming into power and people are going to be, you know, disadvantaged if they're not you know and who would be favored in that far to right regime i think that you'll enjoy this there's a lot of chaos obviously a lot of money put into it uh very very intense film yep and let's not forget the table saw scene Whew, boy was oh, that man <laughs> <laughs> like just just the kills in this were very very over the top gory and it's funny because the last one we're going to talk about there's some really violent kills but the movie isn't based on it i feel like frontiers high tension based on kills based on blood based on gore then it's based on like oh you're right it's like a found footage but nicer of these people being invaded and then the final one is different but i wonder if that's also because it was made 10 years later almost it could be because yeah i think right because i think frontiers and all of them were in that french extreme and that's why they were called the french extreme wave because they were all super violent and over the top like inside and martyrs is the exact same way like just violent over the top um but yeah the one that you're mentioning though that is released about 10 years like well, six years later than Frontiers was. Yeah. Um, that one is Among the Living, which was uh, released April 30th, 2014. And if I remember correctly, I'm not going to look it up, but I'm just going off the top of my head. I believe this was done by the two directors that did Martyrs. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, but the uh, synopsis is teen troublemakers break into an abandoned film lot and witness a masked figure dragging a woman into an underground lair. No one believes their story until the masked maniac shows up to silence them forever. Now, where the violence starts off, and this is in the very beginning. Yes. You get a very violent scene with a pregnant mother who literally just kicks the shit out of her husband. And yep. then he, uh, then she goes upstairs to kill a, what I would say is a toddler. Yeah. Or, yeah, I'd say about yeah, toddler age because you don't really see him. You just kind of see his hands. Yeah. And like she is going to kill him next. You don't know why. And the father tries to stop her. And then she turns around and basically just stabs herself in the pregnant belly and kills herself right in front of and then slits her fucking throat. Yeah, right in yeah. front of the husband and right in front of the toddler who she was trying to kill. You get really no explanation as to why that happens until much later. And yeah. uh but yep, then it kind of goes into these teenage boys, which uh, kind of like are hanging out. Like they are troublemaker teenagers, like, you know, what yeah. typical teenage boys would do. They're about to... 14 years old. It's the last day of school. They have, you know, I like the character development. This is one of the few films where I feel like we got true character development. In Frontiers, we did a little bit. We find out that Yasmin is pregnant and that there's this discussion about an abortion and that her brother got shot and that they've stole this money because they need to survive. But I find like in Among the Living, we do get some scenes of the boys in the classroom and at lunchtime where you, and they do that kind of travel stuff together where we find out the one kid's stepdad beats him all the time. The other kid gets bullied all the time. The other kids, you know, dad died at a young age. And like, I find you have a little bit more empathy for these three boys. I And the one yeah. kid that really stands apart, like the big buff kid, you know what I'm talking about? He's way taller yep. than the other like little one. I'm like, how are the three of these guys friends? But 
you know, it's it's convincing enough and they do give you more of a backstory of these three. Yes. Yeah, right? you, you get a lot, a lot of character development. You do. Like, you kind of feel for these kids. Like, they follow this creepy dude into, like, a barn and he chases them out and the one kid is, like, possibly going to stab him, but he doesn't and he runs away. And that's where they end up at the abandoned film lot. And that's where they see the woman being pulled into this church. And lo and behold, it's by the people who we saw in the first scene. The kid's yep. grown up and the dad is there. And it looks like he's doing a blood transfusion or something like that. Yeah, I think so. To like, Because like the, you realize the kid, like the kid from the earlier part of the movie is now like, it's a weird, but he's like full grown, but yet he is only six years old. You find out. Yes. Yes. Like mentally he's a child, but he is very creepily made. Like he's tall, very tall, lanky. Um, but and yeah, nude like, the yeah, entire and time. Nude the entire time. Yeah. Wearing a clown right. mask. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the dad, like you get the reveal later, but we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, like, uh, after they get this, like after they see what happens, then all of a sudden the son starts coming back and trying to take out these kids one by one yeah and take out their family as well like the kids we should say the kids alert the police so they try to save the woman they can't they get away um really good scene of these kids trying to get to this woman they can't they get away they bring the police there the police think they're liars they take them home you know the one kid's super rich and his parents are like oh you're gonna be in big trouble his babysitter's there and i think one of my favorite scenes is when you know this guy decides like he tells his son you're going to go stalk these kids and kill them um george watched this movie with me as well and he said to me he's like well how did he know where these kids lived all he had was the missing poster of the cat i'm like yeah big plot hole like right he figured out from the one says the one kids the main character i would say his little sister lost her cat and he had the poster in his pocket and it fell out at the church as they were trying to save this woman. And that's how this guy was apparently able to track them down, which was a little over the top and silly, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, that's a good, that is a good plot hole right there. Right? Like, it's pretty silly, but there's a scene where she's putting him to bed and, and she's like, well, you'd be more grown up if you didn't have all these stuffed toys. And he's listing, and she's listing them and then says a clown. He's like, I don't have a clown. Yeah. Right? And yeah. there's just this random fucking clown head sitting in his pile of stuffed toys. And I find that scene still very suspenseful. Yeah, because like it's literally just this creepy, dirty clown mask amongst the <laughs> fluffy, happy looking stuffed animals. It's like, what doesn't belong here? <laughs> it's just like, it's very creepy. And then you're, they're like, well, shit, we need to get downstairs and call mm-hmm. authorities because this is kind of creepy. What's going on? And then they, she realizes that someone's calling the house, but it's her cell phone that's calling the house. And she's like, wait, my cell phone was right over there and it's not there anymore. So I, she answers and it sounds like all she hears is like breathing on the other end. Yes. And so she hangs up and decides to call her cell phone and she hears it ringing from up in his, the little boy's bedroom. So she's like, you stay here. I'm going to go upstairs and figure it out. And this is where I found it very creepy. Like the phone is vibrating and lighting up underneath the clown mask in that just in that scene where oh, it's just so lighting well up. Done. It's, oh, it's so creepy. And it's then, so creepy. Yeah. Then you see the tall, lengthy shadow stand up behind her and take her out. Yeah. Like, and yeah, you made a good point about this though. They don't show any of the violence towards the kids. None. So he so this character kills the first young man and his babysitter. You don't really see anything. There is a chase scene between him and the guy, but you don't see what happens. And then the other young man who's being be- been beat up by his stepdad goes to shoot his stepdad. His dad, stepdad wakes up, beats the fuck out of him. And then that dude shows up there. He's a mechanic, so it's in his garage. Guy goes out to the garage, gets killed, and then the kid follows out, sees the figure. You assume he gets killed as well. And then we have our, right, because they cut away. And then we have our one main character left, our one young man, who I actually really like him. And I love the relationship he has with his stepfather. It's such a minor part of this film. But I love how the stepfather isn't a dick. Like, the mom's giving the kid the gears and the stepdad's like, ah, it's not a big deal. I did lots of stupid shit when I was his age. And he's teasing him. He's like, hey, next time you want to have that kind of fun, why don't you give me a call and I'll come with you? Like, and you can tell that the stepdad and this kid get along actually really well. Yeah. Like you can tell that he's come into the picture and he hasn't, like they have a new baby together, but he's really good with the kid's daughter. Like the kids, I'm sorry, the, the boy's sister, the one that lost the cat. 
is, you know, the same dad for those two. And then mm-hmm. the baby, there's a baby that's, you know, his kid. And I really like the the balance between the relationship, actually. Yeah, like that whole family dynamic for that main character and the main family. It's really well done. And, and you actually really like the stepdad. Like yeah, you actually, like, in the short time he's in there, you're like, man, this is a really good dude. Yeah, and like, you feel so bad for him because like what happens to him? Huge. And I that is the one thing that I will give this movie credit for. I felt really bad for Yasmin in the Frontiers. I mm-hmm. felt really fucking bad for her. But but we had a whole movie with her. We had her from the beginning throughout, and you felt a lot of empathy. This stepdad shows up for maybe 20 minutes of the movie. Yeah. But within that 20 minutes, you're like, wow, he's a really good guy. He's really, you know, adopted these two kids of his own. He's really trying. Like, you could tell there's no hostility between him and the son. Like, he's trying to smooth it over with the mom and be like, ah, give him a break. You know, it's fine. I did stupid shit too. Don't worry about it. You know, like, he's really trying to kind of play it down. And basically, this lanky guy breaks into their house. And this man's trying to protect his family. And he fucking he he disables him literally he paralyzes him yeah and then tortures him to death it's fucking disturbing yeah and like fucks up his already broken arm and breaks his arm even more in a very violent violent fashion and this is where we get the reveal that this is a tall lanky naked dude yeah yeah and like with a very very micro penis or it was just cold in there (laughs) it was very cold in there right and there's a great scene with the baby where this this thing kidnaps the baby and puts the baby in the fucking washing machine. Yes, and that and, scene was so fucking heartbreaking. Uh, and you don't see the baby in there. You just hear it. You just yeah. So what they did was they put baby crying sounds in the washing machine. But the mom and the son are trying to get this fucking washing door, this this laundry door open, and they're and they can't get it open. And the figures behind him and just beating the fuck out of the mom. And the kid's trying to get it open, trying to get it open. He beats the fuck out of the kid. And somehow they manage to get it open. The kid manages to get his little sister out. The the guy in the mean of all this chaos kidnaps the other little sister, takes it back to the family. Like it, which didn't really make a lot of sense. Like, why would he do that? Why is he going to try to like coax the young man there? Like that makes right. it silly, silly, silly film. Um, the two cops that seem to exist in this fucking town show up randomly because they did call the police. And then the police follow this kid to the church and there's a big standoff there it does get a little silly in that scene um but i will say that there were certain parts of this that i found very suspenseful and again i'm a little biased this was one of my in my top 10 movies so you know i really like this film right um what did you think of the ending scene scott like more objectively than i can probably be so um like i i really dug like the whole like final standoff like yeah it was kind of just silly like but they needed something big to happen there and uh like yeah the violence that is done to the cops there like and then the reveal that yep the masked person that is there with the tall lanky dude is the father from the very beginning of the film and you then he even like says like because uh the mother ends up stabbing the uh, the stun and uh like he falls down and the father runs up to him going he's just a boy why would you do this he's only six years old like he literally just this like some type of uh deformation or something that happened to this child where he like grew really tall but he was literally only six years old like mm-hmm. it's and uh that's kind of where like you get the reveal like oh okay that's why the mother was trying to kill him earlier and blah 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 yeah. he's kind of a quote-unquote freak of nature yeah. Um, and, uh, like, I do love the cold heartedness because he's like, you know, why would you do this? He's just a boy, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yet you're sending him out to kill our children. And, uh, I love how the main boy just says, no, fuck this mom, grabs the gun and just shoots the kid right in the head and then walks away. I did. The only thing I did not like about that ending, and I'm going to sound like Venom, Venom from Fresh Cuts, No More Room in Hell. Why the fuck would you not shoot the father? Yeah. Like, why the fuck would you not be like, and you're dead too, you motherfucker? Because you know that, and he just walks away staring at them. I did find that ending, and I get it, right? Like, they just wanted to set it up for what we learn at the end of the film, which I will give this film credit for. I enjoyed the other three, but like Frontiers, you know, leaves with the chick being a re- like ends with the chick, you know, running into the police barricade and surrendering. But this film here, we see that finale of the guy, the dad escaping and the mom, the baby, the little sister surviving with the with the one remaining boy. We see him at his friend's grave site. So we know the two other boys have died. They go visit 
the stepfather who died Mm -hmm. right and they have that really nice emotional scene she launches the uh firework into the sky that's what he said he wanted to have done right and like that was honestly probably the best part anything that involved that family i really really enjoyed yeah and then we see the dad from previously the dad of the freak guy at a park with a hood on and it's busy and then there's this woman pushing a baby carriage and he says we'll start again we'll build a new family and we will live among the living and everyone starts to clear out and he's just following her down the path which we know he's going to kidnap her like that's what that's obviously leading up to yeah and i did appreciate how they ended it like that like it gave a little bit more this guy's still alive he's gonna fucking do it again and it's meant to make you feel unsettled yep right? yeah, there are some issues to the whole film in general but like yeah like mm-hmm. it's still like a still a very solid watch and yeah like i i think it's uh doing all four of these films like each one was similar but also different and i like that i like because like french films have definitely a similar styling to them they absolutely do. The gore is the same. I think the difference with Among the Living, and I think it's interesting that we chose this film because it was separated from the extreme time, is it had extreme parts in it, but the whole thing was an extreme. Yeah. The other three, as like obviously them isn't, you know, extreme throughout it. It's just very like high tension, high chasing, home invasion, you know, shit's gonna go down. But Frontiers and High Tension is bloody and gross for a majority of the film. (laughs) Like, there's a lot of blood in that film. There's a lot of intense scenes. There's a lot of stuff that you kind of suspend disbelief on, you know, and that's fine, right? A lot of these films involve suspending disbelief, and that's okay. Yep, and French films will make you very uncomfortable. Yes, very much so. So... I enjoyed doing this and it's really showed me that the practical effects that the French can do, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to gore and kills and blood and that they stay on it. Like when that guy's having his arm rebroken, the Hmm. cutting of the Achilles heel, the shooting in the head, the fucking chainsaw in high tension. Hell, even the dresser dresser stairway kill with the father in high tension Hmm. yes everything is just intense gory intense and they make sure you can see how intense it fucking is the entire time (laughs) they're Mm -hmm. like all right and and i really do respect that about these films i think that if you are somebody who can appreciate how realistic they make it look then that's awesome but just be prepared for a lot of plot holes and some very bare basic plot lines, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. No. Um, you know, it's just a different way of looking at cinema. Yeah, it, and it's very, uh, yeah, it's just a very unique perspective. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed this. I thought it was really interesting to see these movies and um, very, very gory. So I'm looking forward to whichever country we choose next, or not, I shouldn't say country. Because well, country or language, I guess. Language, really right? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. But um, I think these films were all from France, though. I think the ones that we selected were all yeah. from France. So um, obviously there's Quebec. And yep. I find that even the Quebec films that we've seen in the past are also very gory, mm-hmm. right? Like They seem to kind of follow that kind of train of thought as well, too. So yeah, like it's it's very interesting. Like there just at least seems to be a pattern with a lot of the countries, like yeah. in their styles. Yeah, it was interesting. So I'm glad we did this. Um, if you guys are gore hounds, check out these French films. I think you'll have a really good time with them. So, yeah, I, I completely agree. Like, that's they are some very fun films. Like, two of these I had not seen, or three, oh, yeah, two of these I had not seen before and were ones that I've always wanted to watch. So, I'm glad that we finally watched them. Yeah, it was entertaining. It was a very much a good time. Um, and I guess we'll move into our out of the dark segment, which is where Scott and I are gonna like rough ride a roll and call people out, I guess. Um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Actually, Scott came up with this question, so I'm going to let him introduce it. All right. So this came to me because when I went to see The Cursed in theaters, I was, it was me and three other people in this giant theater on a Sunday night, was it? So yeah, a weekend evening. I thought you went Saturday afternoon. No, I ended up going during uh, nighttime. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because I had, uh, I remember I freaked out and lost my wallet when I was coming home. (laughs) Right, 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 right. Yes. Okay. My bad. But, uh. Yeah, I ended up going on a weekend night, and yeah, four people in theater for this movie. 
So I decided to come up with like, all right, why is it the fact that we get all these indie horror films that eventually that do actually make it to the theaters, but never get the draw that the big franchises do? And it's like what I was kind of bitching about earlier. It's like people always complain about like, oh, all that's ever in theaters now are the superhero films and like then the big franchise horror films. Nothing new in horror ever comes out to theaters, blah, blah, blah. It's all straight to streaming or VOD. I call bullshit because let's mm-hmm. see, there's Last Night in Soho, there's The Night House, there's The Cursed. All these films came out. I think Last Night in Soho probably got a bigger draw, but come play. Uh, yeah, come play. Um, what was the one I seen last year? Uh, fuck, forget that. Slack. Name. Oh, Slacks. Yeah, that was in theaters too for you. Yep. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think it was here in the U.S., but it definitely was in Canada. Uh, Canada. Um, yep. But yeah, like all these unique films come to theaters, like all the A24 stuff, like A24 still puts out their movies in theaters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. St. Maud. Yep, St. Maud, like stuff like that. They But they do not draw the audience. Like I get I get not drawing the mainstream audience because uh, as far as I know, a lot of these indie films do not get the promotions that a lot of the bigger franchises like Scream, Halloween, mm-hmm. and whatnot get. So you don't see a lot of trailers saying coming to theaters very often for these. And I think maybe that's just because these bigger studios have more marketing, like have more money in marketing that they can do that. I don't know. But but yeah, there are a lot of people I always hear bitching about how there's no unique horror films that come to theaters. But yet when unique horror films come to theaters, no one fucking goes. And yep. it kind of annoys the shit out of me when I so like whenever I hear someone say that now, I'm gonna be like, fuck you. Cause you don't because <laughs> you obviously you obviously did not support the films that actually were in theaters, like that actually attempted to go to the theater like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And like i know and i know you are just as like like pretty much right on the same page as oh me. yeah i think we you and i speak the same language here and you know i probably wouldn't have thought that way prior to started to podcasting you know since we've been podcasting scott and i collectively have probably watched close to over a thousand films like i'm looking at the last couple of years yeah. that are first time watches for us whether they were 2021s, 2020s, 2022s, or other films that we've just watched, you know, from other years. And it's really increased my filmography. I find now more than ever, it's rare that someone will bring up a film to me and I, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> like I, I probably have seen it or I at least know of it or whatever the case may be. And people who are really invested in horror It is absolutely your right and your prerogative to worship the ground that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise walks on, that the Halloween franchise walks on, the Scream walks on, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Purge, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There is nothing wrong with enjoying those films, but I feel the same way about people who enjoy those films so much that they don't give anything else a chance that I feel about people that tell me that the 1980s were the best era in horror films. Agreed. You are, you are, you are really not doing any benefits to the genre to make those kind of statements. Um, the night house last year was, was one of the best films that were dropped in theaters. It was, it was well acted. It was energizing. It was suspenseful. It, had a great plot to it and it made less than probably oh i know it made less than fucking forever purge which don't get me wrong i get forever purge right i am on box office mojo right now and yeah uh the night house in its entire entire theater run made worldwide 15 million which domestically (laughs) 7 million of it 8 million internationally wow so like and let's see uh the purge or the forever purge is that that was the last one right yeah forever purge let's see what they have here let's just give an example of like franchises yeah the Forever Purge, worldwide, 76 million. And to even think that those two movies could be put in the same category together. like, And I'm not shitting on Forever Purge. I watched Forever Purge and had a good enough time with it. I didn't think it was a horrible film. Yeah. And that was fine. Um, you know, it was a typical Purge film. And that's fine. But when you have fucking brilliant movies like The Night House, Come Play, Cursed, The Cursed. Now, last night, I saw The Cursed on a Saturday night. There was about 15 people in the theater. Oh, that's good at least. Better right. than I expected. And outside of me. So outside of me and George, that probably would have been 17. Um, so that's not bad for a film like that. And that was the seven o'clock showing on a Saturday night. Um, 
That film is incredibly well acted, well known stars. The chick in there also saw, uh, was the main chick from Yellowstone. So, oh, yeah. You know, it's not like there's not familiar people in this. And yet again, we will have people that will say there's no good horror films that have come out this year because all they do is watch Scream 5, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and what I refer to as low hanging fruit. And you know what? If that's what you really did, cool, man, no problem. Yeah. But to then have the opinion that nothing good has come out when you haven't bothered to watch international films, films like this that are indie films or just aren't the big franchises, it really doesn't give much validity. Here's an example. I don't like comic book films. I don't go and I don't go. I don't watch them. I'm not someone who advocates for them. So my opinion when it comes to Marvel films is really lackluster because I haven't watched enough of them to tell people what is good and what is not. So right. I don't pretend to, right? I am I am definitely a fair-weathered person. I'll probably see, which I know is DC, I'll see the new Batman film. No problem. It looks good. I'll probably wait till it comes out because it's three hours long. <laughs> right. Um, I enjoyed the Dark Knight series. And I've enjoyed some of the adventure films, but I haven't watched enough of them. So if I was to be like, well, the first Iron Man's the best one, and people would be like, well, why do you say that? I'd be like, well, because it's the best one. Well, the <laughs> truth is, it's I've seen two, Iron Man 1 and Iron Man 2. It would be like the same people who tell me that horror has been bad or that there's no good movies when all they fucking watch is Scream and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Get the fuck yeah. out of here. Like, <laughs> that is not a valid opinion. And I don't know why people feel the need. Like, if there's something I don't know a lot about, if I'm like, you know what, I haven't really watched all those films, I don't really know. Um, I talked about my friend Mark earlier. He is really into Universal Mar Monster Films. So is Liz, who's a listener of the show. Liz yeah. watches a lot of Universal Monster Films. Oh, yeah, she's a big buff of those. Right? I would never walk up to Liz and Mark and be like, oh, no, like, Bride of Frankenstein's the worst. And they'd be like, well, how many have you seen? I'd be like, Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein, that's it. Like, it's the same thing. I don't have right. the knowledge. So I rely on Liz or Mark to say, hey, I know you've watched a lot of Universal Monster films. What would, Which ones do you think I should check out? I'm okay with someone else being the expert or someone else giving me information. And yes. I feel like when people feel the need to be like, this year sucked for horror or this is sucked. It's because they're not willing to listen to what other people have to say for whatever reason. I don't know why. Because it's yeah. okay to be corrected on something or okay to have information shared with you that you didn't know about before. Like, yeah, and and it's, uh, yeah, because especially when it's like the stuff in theaters, like, you know, us podcasters, we all, like a lot of us will go to the theater to support yeah. horror, any shape or form horror film. Like, even if we're like, oh, I'm really not excited for this, but it's still horror. So I'm going to go support in theaters because, you know, horror is what keeps theaters alive. Like when, like, a lot of the time, like, because they are very cheap, but they are also, like, cheap to make, but also bring in a lot of money. Um, yeah. And you can't me, get mad as a horror fan when you're like, there's nothing new being done in the, genre, in the genre. If you refuse to go see other films that are not Scream, yep. Halloween, or any of the other big franchises, you don't actually, in my opinion, get the right... <laughs> to complain because you've done nothing to support the other filmmakers and of course you may walk into a movie and go you know what i didn't really love that that's okay right that's okay but i'll be honest i have rarely not liked an indie film in horror or what we consider indie which like last night in soho really is an indie but like people might consider it that because it's not fucking halloween i have not liked franchise films mm -hmm. pretty much <laughs> Pretty much right? any of the franchise films that have come out, I'm just like, all right. Because they're paint by number plot. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to do anything super. I'm sorry for everyone. Like Halloween ends. I get it. All right. I get that you're a Halloween fan. I like Halloween too. It's not like Halloween ends. It's going to come out and you're going to be like, oh my God, what a deep fucking thoughtful movie. It did something so new for the genre. Like I just, you know, can't understand how two people can't tell the difference between a man that's six foot seven and another one that's five foot two and looks like the penguin. Like, honestly, like I get the fuck out of here. Right. Like when we watch the curse and, and Scott and I will obviously not get spoilers about it. And you're talking about the original folklore of, of the werewolf and the acting is good. The setting is good, but just because it doesn't have that reliability and comfort that you come to know and love with the franchises, doesn't mean that it's not worth stretching outside your comfort zone. And Scott and I, by the way, used to be like that. Like, yeah. we're not talking like two people that, 
Like, how many times did you watch the Friday the fucking 13th movie, Scott? Honestly. Oh, I used to watch them all the fucking time. All right. the goddamn time. Right? Like, I I would watch, like, 1980s slashers. I would watch the occasional new horror film. Like, I remember when Pet Cemetery came out, and I was like, man, like, the, the, re- the, the remake. And I was like, man, you know, I'm real, like, new age. Or when I watched fucking Train to Busan, and I was like, wow, I really like no international films. I knew fuck all, all right? I did not know what else was out there. And if we look even at our top tens or my, or my top tens, like half of those films I had never even seen before. The fact that we fucking wrote love rent a pal and praise yeah. rent a pal, you know, and ten, like three years ago, I never would have watched rent a pal ever. Right. Right. And, and I just think if you're going to be a die hard horror fan, I'm not talking about the mediocre horror fans out there. I get it because I'm a mediocre action film fan. Like I'm only going to see the matrix. I'm not going to see like some new action movie that just came out. You know, I'm going to watch a James Bond film. I'm not going to watch some other side, you know, spy film. I'm not going to do all that. But if you could, so I get, you know, your fair weather horror fan that just wants to watch the franchises, no problem. But if you are somebody who's like, oh no, I'm a real horror fanatic. And all you watch is fucking franchise films. You are really missing out on the genre. And also you're not encouraging new artists to come up with new things. So right. be prepared for George, Jordan Peele to be the only thing you fucking see that's different. Because that's the only person that's getting the drive in the theaters or Robert Eggers or whatever, or Addy Ostar, because they're the only ones that are going to get even notice. And even then, how much money did Midsommar make in the theaters? Yeah, let me look Honestly, it up real quick. right? Like, I'm sure that they Midsommar did not make the money that it people go and praise it now. And I think it's because a lot of people watched it on VOD. Uh, Midsommar made worldwide forty-seven million. That's not bad, but it's no purge at seven fu- seventy fucking five million. Right, exactly. Again, right? Like it's still. <sighs> anyway, bottom line here is what Scott and I are trying to say: is if you are a hardcore horror fan, please consider watching other things that aren't franchised in the theaters. It doesn't mean that you got to go to every single Hindi horror film. It doesn't mean that you have to like every film that you see in the theaters. I didn't love Scream. I thought it was okay. I thought it was average. But I still went and I supported that the same way I went and supported Come Play, the same way I went and supported The Curse. Because by giving my support to different movies that are coming out of a genre that I love and that I'm invested in, I'm allowing, I'm, I'm encouraging variety to occur. And I, I think that's the message that Scott and I would like to portray to people. Yet again, if you're a fair weather horror fan, and I get it, I'm a fair weather friend, fan of lots of shit that I would never go and dig deeper into. That's okay. But you can't walk around and call yourself a hardcore horror fan and be like, it's because I've seen Friday the 13th 18 billion times. Like, right. <laughs> that's not, like, that's great. We all like Friday the 13th, but there's much more out there. Um, and, and the more that we support it, Venom has said this for years, Venom from No More Room in Hell and Fresh Cuts, the more we're going to get. So if we don't do that and we don't support it, you're not going to get the variety. You're not going to get, quote unquote, something new. Step outside your comfort zone. Go yeah, watch got, that international film. Because you got to show these studios that, you know, you want unique stuff. Because the more we just keep going for these big franchises, that's all they're going to fucking produce is just these big franchises because that'll be what puts asses in seats. Right. But like you need to like show these other studios out there like hey we want to see this type of stuff in theaters like because it I know a lot of people are still on that debate of if uh you know theater versus home theater I'm I am a hundred percent like if a movie is going to be at a big screen theater fuck yes I am going there because I want to experience it on the big screen and absolutely so, like, people should do that like if you're going to be talking to the smack about like there's no good horror in theaters well put your money where your mouth is and go to see these independent films that are showing up i agree with you scott and the only thing that i would say separately if for some reason you don't feel comfortable going to a movie theater but if you can at least pay to rent it yeah. like at least fucking do that like <laughs> like even right. then it's it's less of a risk even then it's less of a risk because you don't have to go anywhere and typically you know unless it was like some of the home premiere mirrors that we saw during covid you know, you're going to be spending, what, $3.99, $5.99, $6.99 instead of, you know, however much you would be spending if you went to the theater. And there's so many movie theater passes out there. I know the States, you guys have tons. We have the Cineplex Pass now here in Canada, which I subscribe to to support the cinemas. And 
like just for fuck's sakes at least rent the movie <laughs> if you're not right, gonna exactly. go to the theater like at least rent it at least invest in it um if if you are someone who is truly like, I love the genre, I want it to grow and, you know, I want to see variety, then you need to put your money where your mouth is. If you're someone who's like, no, no, man, I enjoy the franchises and that's all I want to see. No problem. Respect the game. I get it. You do you, but you can't say one thing and do another. And I think that's where yeah. what Scott and I are coming from is if you're going to say that you want these things and you got to make some action to help make it happen. Exactly. Like, mm-hmm. You got to show these studios that you want this. Right. Just like Scott and Scott and I have to show each other all the time that we want this. Oh yeah. And all the want, time. And that we want Friday nightmares. Our, our, our listeners, our fans make right. us. Right. Scott and I just like to, uh, to get on here and talk about how we feel about, uh, about movies. But I think it's important, especially as this year continues and we have some of the big releases like Halloween ends coming out this year the fire started movie that's being redone which i'm sure some people will go to it looks okay i don't know you saw a preview for it right yeah like, like i've seen the original so i got that something yeah I i've watch. never yeah i've never seen the original either but yeah this almost looked like it was a turning into a superhero movie I'm going meh right kind of but i did really like brightburn right i thought brightburn was a really good film i mean it, it is, is like based brightburn, off a of stephen king it. film so yeah i really er, i book book yeah I, I really enjoyed Brightburn quite a bit, actually. That's probably one of my favorite superhero movies, and it's not even a real superhero. It's like an anti-hero. I would see a sequel to Brightburn. Oh, absolutely. Fucking hands down, right? Um, Fuck yeah. But And yet again, I don't know a lot about superhero movies. Like, I, I know nothing, so I don't share my opinion with it because I don't watch enough to know. So, right. you know, I have to look to other people to kind of expand it. So please, please, please check out indie films this year. Check out films that aren't the main franchises. Challenge yourself to watch something different. Watch that international film that maybe you haven't watched before. Put yourself out there. Try different things because there's so much good horror to be had. Mm -hmm. So many good films out there. And you're really at a loss if you just stick to the, if if you want to go deeper, if you really want to get into the genre, if you want to expand your knowledge. Um, And it will really change the way you look at films. Honestly, it's, I know for me, it really has. Oh yeah, same Um, here you know and it's and it's changed my analytical thoughts of them and my understanding of them and my enjoyment of them you know i can turn my brain off and watch terrifier and have a great time um and then i can watch something like the cursed and and also have a great time and i think that's important it absolutely is right like because horror can expand all forms and i love it right so that is our uh that's our thoughts so please check out these indie films please 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 maybe, please. Get, a, maybe get a cinema pass if you have one that's accessible for you i pay 11.99 a month for mine and i get a free movie ticket 20 percent off concessions discounted um, additional movie tickets. I actually really like it and I think it's really worth it. Um, so I encourage other people living in Canada, if you haven't signed up for the Cine Club membership yet, it's it's really great. I uh, I really do think there's advantages to it. Yeah. And unfortunately, I don't, none of the theaters I, that are around me have it, have like an yeah, option for it. So it's too bad. Yeah. But most of mine are like uh, indie, independent style theaters. They're not like big named theater franchises. Well, you're supporting the independent theaters then. Right. Exactly. I mean, either way, Scott's Scott's a hero is what we're hearing yeah. here. Not all heroes wear clothes. Some of them has have beards. Long, Some of them have beards, nothing else. Long, That's it, just beards. That's what Scott walks around with. And for more on that, go to our OnlyFans page. Yeah. Um, have we recorded since I did that post about you being with that fucking zombie? I'm glad everyone thought that was funny, Chompy. I don't think we have. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think we have. I think this is the yeah. first bit of it. I'm glad people found our Valentine's Day post funny. Uh, that I said Scott was getting engaged to Chompy the zombie. And by um, the way, he did say yes. <laughs> and that Scott's agreed to become a zombie and live the zombie lifestyle. <laughs> I will be sending out wedding invitations to all of you. <laughs> very exciting times here at Friday Nightmares <laughs> um so we'll be back again in two weeks again we'll be keeping this uh this momentum going uh with our next episode I guess I'm not sure which country we'll do next Scott and I will probably talk off air and figure that out we got a or language we'll do we do have uh Germany that we talked about yep. doing um there's Swedish films there's Swedish Finnish films, films Norwegian Finnish films, films Irish yeah. films irish uk we could do uk and yep. uh, or maybe we should do british separate and i don't yeah maybe we'll have to look into that a little bit more um and see what we can come up with because uh yeah we're having a good time with these it's uh it's fun it's uh yeah 
Um, one that we'll have to do for our good buddies, uh, Phil Ray and Peter Baird, Brazilian horror. Oh, absolutely. Phil and Peter. Oh, my heart. <laughs> um, yeah, we definitely have to do those for Phil uh, and Peter, for sure. Absolutely. 110%. So in the meantime, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Legion Podcast Network. Um, also, if you're not on the Legion Patreon. What are you waiting for? <laughs> what are you waiting for? <laughs> you can join today. It's pretty cheap. I think it's like $2 a month or something like that, or $3 a month. You get access yeah. to Scotty and I's top five, um, as well as a bunch of other shows. It's a, a very good investment for you. Um, and yeah, I guess in the meantime, is there anything else you wanted to say to the good people, Scotty? Um, uh, not that I can think of. So yeah, just once again, thank you all for joining us and take it, uh, you know, enjoying what we do and always creating the wonderful, uh, photoshops and memes that of us, it just makes this even more entertaining for us, especially when it's something that we say and taken out of context. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah, amazing. So thank you all for that. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for always leaving us feedback and yeah we hope to uh have we'll have another country or language picked out and hopefully have some very unique films to talk about there as well so yeah until next time unpleasant dreams see ya